Johnny's on the field, the crowd getting behind the home standing crew. What a special day for everyone. The far stands full, the near stands full. Everywhere is full. You bet. People I mean, are hanging from trees. I would say that they are at least six deep in the end zones. That's how many fans we, I mean, at least six deep. And uh, it's just an incredible outpouring of support for both these two football programs, but uh, more appropriately for John's chase of number 409. Temporary stands have been erected across on the visitor's side to each side, the right and left of the traditional visitor's section, and then behind the goalpost on the field house side of St. John's. And all those bleachers are full, as Tom mentioned. Everything is full here, not a space to be had. Well, you had to get here early, if not last night. In fact, there were Bethel fans sleeping out overnight to make sure that they could get in and get a seat here at Clemens Stadium. That, according to Tom Stock, who was here bright and early along with his crew. Tom Stock knows how to winter camp. I can vouch for that. Ryan Davis, 5'10", junior out of Shelby, Montana, up on the high line. Kicking off. Check that. That's Paul Shetter. Paul Shetter will kick off for the Royals. 18 instead of 13. Ball in the air, and it's going to bounce in front of Elliott. In fact, Chase Beaudry picks it up on the 15-yard line, looking for a lane, and gets to the 20, and that's about it. A little bit of confusion there on the opening kickoff for the Johnnies as to whether Elliott or Beaudry would indeed pick up the football and making the tackle Brian Pierce, the junior defensive back out of River Falls, Wisconsin, for the Royals. Certainly not a textbook way to start. You don't want a high kickoff like that to hit the ground. You want to get under it and catch it. The Johnnies don't. The ball rolls around a little bit. Chase Beaudry picks it up, makes the best of it, puts his head down for a yard or two on the return. I think one key early, everyone should take a big collective breath here. Now, this is a very big game. Everyone's tight. Relax and play football. It's the same 11 guys out there as last week. Keating and Elliott split right. Jed Regalman lines up wide left. Split back to the backfield with Nelson and Tice. Keating under center. And the Johnnies will start with a reverse to Elliott. Looking for a lane. Now he's going to throw the football. He's got Regalman coming open, but the ball is picked off by Lacey. Lacey of the Royals picking the ball off at the 41-yard line, and Bethel forces the first turnover and gets the first break in the ball game. Johnny's open the game with a gadget play. Keating pitching to Elliott, coming back on a reverse type play. Blake Elliott throws the ball left-handed, so as he was running left, instead of coming around the end, the pass off that option was called. Blake throws it up in the air, but the ball hung up a little bit too long. Jed Regalman was open early. The ball fluttered in the air. The interception was made, and Bethel has it in St. John's territory, first and 10 at the 34. Yep, the 34, the official start for the Royals on offense. Actually, the 33. Kirkhoff starts with a running play to Porta. Porta's got a lane inside the 30 and down to the 26-yard line. Ryan Wynott making the tackle. Porta going around right end, getting at least seven yards, maybe a little more. Excellent blocking at the point of, the, of attack there for Bethel coming around the right end. Porta following his fullback. A big hole right at the point of attack. Porta bursts through it, picks up seven yards, second and three for Bethel. Bethel will send Kildy as well as Jeff Lane split left. And now some confusion. Kirkhoff giving instructions to Paul Scrabeck, the tight end who lines up left side. Some Bethel people are trying to get too close to the field, it looks like. Get back. Referee coming yeah, across referee the field, coming up, instructing asking, uh, yeah. game security to move the fans back. Yeah, they are right up. Far side I mean, the they're field. two, three yards off the sideline. There's that many bodies here. Everybody trying to get just a little bit closer. SRO on the far side. Porter lining up as the lone back of the backfield. Two wide receivers left for Kirkhoff on second down and three from the Johnny 26-yard line. Hand off. Porter try the middle again, and he's down inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Gans putting a hat on him. Able to make the hit, but it's going to be a first down for the Royals, their first of the game. Now, one of the points I wanted to make in the pregame is that I think this game will be decided by defense and going along with defense's turnovers. Bethel getting an early turnover, getting some momentum early. Now they've had a couple consecutive uh, successful running plays. It's going to come down to which team can stop each other in the red zone. One minute in, no score, but the Royals are driving. Inside the Johnny 20 at the 19-yard line, they send three wide receivers, including Kildee, as well as Lane split left. Kirkhoff's going to throw. Rolling left now will run with the football. He's inside the 18, down close to the 16-yard line. That's where McCambridge hits him. Why not also there on the stick along with Stephens Meyer and Gans? 
excellent pressure that time put on by Damian Dumont. So initially he was in the backfield as Kirkhoff went to set. Damian was forcing Kirkhoff out of his comfort zone. All Kirkhoff could do was tuck the ball and run to his left. He did pick up positive yardage though. Second and seven here coming for Bethel. Bethel at the Johnny 17 yard line with 13.20 to play in the first quarter. Two wide receivers are to the right. Ludvigson joined out there in the slot by Lane. Kirkhoff will hand it off. Port on the carry. Gets down to the 15 yard line. That's where Hood is able to make the tackle. Tell you what, some aggressive blocking going on downfield. Dave Thomas taking it right to Cam McCambridge and driving him back to the five yard line. The line of scrimmage started off the 17 of McCambridge, winding up way behind the play. And welcome back, Jeremy Hood, as he yep. corners the left side of that defense on that play. And he, as he sees the draw coming or the delay play, instead of continuing on his pass rush, he closes quickly and makes a tackle almost at the line of scrimmage. Big play here. Third down and six. The Royals, 38% of their third down opportunities. They've converted on 48 of 126 coming into this game. High formation. Hand off to the big fullback, Evans, and he tries the right side, gets down close to the 10-yard line. And depending on the spot, he looks like he's going to be a little bit short of a first down. Last man off the pile for the Johnnies was uh, Dybul that time. And he's playing with a cast again on his left arm. That may hamper his tackling just a bit. Looks like a possible first down, depending on the spot. They're saying fourth down, marking it fourth on the far sideline. So it's going to be fourth and short. And the Royals have hit on 17 of 23 tries on fourth down. And now the Johnny fans come to their feet to urge the defense on fourth and short. First big decision of the game. High formation. Bill Porter lines up behind Evans. Kirkhoff barking the signals. Toss sweep, left side. Porter trying to get to the hole. He falls forward. He's down to the Johnny seven yard line. He's got the first down. And it's first and goal for the Royals. Bethel runs wide on that fourth and short. Runs a toss sweep out to the left side. Not a lot of room, but enough room for the first down. Bethel has it first and goal to go. Ball actually spotted at the Johnny eight yard line. Another first down for the Royals. Their third here in this first drive. Bethel not afraid to run outside there. You know, the middle was stacked. It's fourth and short. You, you're pitching the ball back six, seven yards and hoping that point of attack holds, and it did that time for the Royals. Correction, second first down for the Royals, according to our St. John's prep stat sheet. Hand off to Evans, and Evans down, trying the right side of the formation for a gain down to the five-yard line before he was pushed back by Wynott and Dumonso. And so now it'll be second and goal, the ball at the five-yard line for the Royals. And, Tom, uh, the Royals... They're a tough team to defend because they have so many different formations and so many different ways they like to move the football. They do, and this year they're a lot more run than pass. In the last few years, they chose to throw first and then run. This year, they set up that passing with the, with the uh, run game. They're doing a nice job so far. Porter's a nice back. Porter lines up behind Evans again. I formation, second and goal from the six. Kirkhoff rolling left, looking to throw. Now runs up the middle inside the five and gets nailed at the four-yard <coughs> line. He took a shot from Steffensmeyer. If he's going to get up, Credit to him because he got nailed right at the four-yard line. Stephen Meyer leading with the pads and got him pretty good. Really good. And Kirkhoff, good decision that time. Nobody was open. Everybody was covered. So he saw the hole in the defense up the middle, up the middle and he took it. And Stephen Meyer came out of nowhere and absolutely flattened Scott Kirkhoff. So far, the Royals were 0 of 1 on third down. We'll have third and goal from the four with 10 and a half to go in this first quarter. No score. Wide receivers to each side. Split left is John Croyle. And Kirkhoff's going to throw. And he's going to get hit. And why not? He's trying to strip the ball and takes him down at the 10-yard line. The Johnnies with their first big defensive play cut up with a sack of Kirkhoff at the 10-yard line. Big Pen, he gets his face featured on the big game day program today. I talked to him. It says, watch out for why not? I talked to him before the game. I asked him, Big Ben, what's the deal? Do you have your personal media secretary taking care of it? And he just sort of gave you that giggle. But boy, is he ferocious on that defensive line. So a big sack there by Pig Pen. And for the talented defensive tackle out of Wabashaw Kellogg, his second of the year. Low snap of the try for three, and it's going to be blocked at the line of scrimmage. No, not good. Shedder on the extra point, or the uh, field goal, rather, from uh, roughly 29 yards. No good, and the Johnnies will take over. We come back, back in 30 on the Johnny Football Network. Keating with a pass of the flat to Elliott. He'll move it out over the 20-yard line to the 25. And the Johnnies will have it at about the 26-yard line. He was brought down on the play by one of the linebackers that time, Matt Wasink, the second leading tackler for the Royals. 
9.17 to go here in the first quarter. Hand off running up the middle was Moore out over the 30 yard line. Check that. Nelson. Chris Moore. Chris Again. Moore is still playing. Chris Man, Moore does I a tell heck you of a what. Job. Comeback player of the year. Oh, <laughs> I tight. wish Chris Moore was in there. He's a good player. <laughs> <laughs> he was. First down for the Johnnies on the gain of five. You know, you call a team after so many years, you just got to wipe the screen blank sometimes, and I failed to do that. Klinsman split left. Elliott to the right. Tom's got a couple of special announcements coming up after this play. 9.06 left to go in the first quarter. Johnny's first and 10 for their own 32. Keating under center. Hands it off. Nelson on the carry up over the 33 to the 34-yard line before he was brought down by the interior defender, Matt Wyshenk, the linebacker. And Tom, a uh, couple of big Johnny fans are missing this one today. Yeah, the, uh, I want to send a, a nice message out to Leroy Hankemeyer. Leroy means so much to the St. John's football program. Leroy is a good friend of mine. He's in the hospital right now. Leroy, we wish you could be here. Also, Brent Vogt, still fighting the jihad over in Baghdad. A couple of guys that mean a lot to this program that wish they could be here. Second down and eight. Johnny's on the move. Left to right on your radio dial. Ball spotted at the 34-yard line with eight and a half to go in the first quarter. No score. I formation, something we don't see very often from the Johnnies. Fake a hand off to Nelson. Keating back to pass. He's got some time. Throws over the middle. Pass incomplete. In and out of Elliott's hands. You don't see that very often, Brian. Blake Elliott had the ball, thought about making a move, but didn't bring the ball with him. Excellent job by Ryan Keating that time. Bethel came with the blitz, so they sent six guys in. Keating read the blitz, stepped up into the pocket, remained calm, hit Blake Elliott right in the hands. Blake trying to make the big play happen. Took his eye off the ball. His head came up to see where he could run. The ball dropped in, complete third and eight coming here for St. John's. What about a first down? Now it's third down and eight. The ball at the Johnny 34-yard line with 8.18 to go in the first quarter. I formation yet again for the Johnnies. Moore setting up behind Tice. I should say Nelson setting up behind Tice. Back to pass is Keating. Looking left, throwing left. Elliott dives. Does he get the catch? Yes. Up over the 40 to the 43-yard line. First down for the Johnnies. A lot of room given by the Bethel corners right now on Elliott. The big cushion play. The Johnnies started out this series with just their stop pattern, a quick hitch pack pass. That time they just fake, fake the run out of the I formation set up. Blake just runs an out pattern right at the first down stakes. Take what they give you. That's what Ryan Keating did on that play. The Johnnies have a first down near midfield. Lee Klinsman will go split left. Elliott to the right side. First and 10, the ball on the Johnny 44-yard line. I formation yet again. Good, the fullback. Tice the halfback. They fake the Tice. Back to pass is Keating. Keating hit as he throws. The ball is loose. And they're going to say an incomplete pass. The referee coming in immediately saying an incomplete pass. And yes, indeed, Keating's hand was in motion. Yeah, it was in motion. And you're going to see a lot of people in blue and gold griping about that one but it was a forward pass a point I want to make is I spoke with Ryan Keating before the game just about some of the things you get they're gonna to want to do today and they're gonna to want to stretch Bethel out they play press on the outside they want to be able to get some balls downfield we haven't seen a post and I don't remember how long St. John's wants to throw the ball last series or last uh, um, set of downs they had a deep out that's something St. John's wants to do is get the ball downfield Second and 10 for the 44. Johnny's lined up with Klinsman split left. He now comes in motion to the right. Toss sweep, left side. Tice looking for a lane. Has it, 45, and gets hit hard. Up at the 47-yard line. Did he fumble the ball? The referees say yes. Tice fumbling the football. He got hit so hard, and Bethel able to come up with the recovery that time. So a fumble and an interception for the Johnnies on offense as this game gets going. We're barely through a half a quarter, and the Johnnies have turned it over twice. Yeah, it's certainly not the design that you have in mind when you come into the game, but you have to overcome these things. The Johnnies overcame the first interception as they attempted a, a trick play on the, on the first drive. This drive, a little more traditional, but the toss sweep going around left end. Away from us, we didn't see the hit, but it was a hard hit. Tice cops, costs up the ball, and Bethel has it. Porter in the I formation here. Kirkhoff, toss sweep to him. Left side, oh. running downhill, 45, 42. And down to about the 41-yard line as there's a lot of hitting going on. Steffensmeyer and the wide receiver Jeff Lane locked up in a nice battle at the 40. And again on the play of close to seven, maybe eight yards. Nope, they're going to say about seven yards for Porta down to the Johnny 41. A lot of extracurricular after the whistle type of stuff. Hey, that's going to happen. This rivalry is huge for St. John's and Bethel. There's no team either team dislikes more. Gain of six on that first down carry. Porta lines up for the eye behind the big fullback Evans. He's 6'1", 225. Two wide receivers right. Kirkhoff rolling to his right, wants to throw. Sets up, going long, down the sideline. 
And this ball is going to begin complete, intended for the wide receiver Jeff Lane. <laughs> Running step for step with him was Mike Zahar, the quarterback out of Brainerd for the Johnny. Guy in the third row almost made a very nice catch there. Great coverage, though, by Zahar as he's running step for step. And as he's running, he's forcing that receiver to go wider and wider toward that sideline. So any catch that's going to be made is going to have to be made spectacularly if it's going to be caught at all along the sidelines. Nice job by the young corner for St. John's. St. John's needs more pressure on the quarterback. Third down at four, the ball at the Johnny 41-yard line. The Royals trying to advance the ball off a of fumble. Kirkhoff gets the snap of the shotgun. He's hit. He tries to turn it upfield. He's going to be stopped short of the line of scrimmage by just about a half yard. Dumanso on the tackle. Good pressure by Jeremy Hood. He got in there and disrupted that play. And so it'll be fourth down now, and we'll see if the Royals try to pin the Johnnies deep or if they're going to go for it. Yeah, it'll be a gamble here to go for it because you're out at the St. John's 41-yard line. And uh, the punt unit for Bethel is going to come on the field. So they briefly considered it, but decided to try and pin St. John's deep in their own territory. Ryan Davis will punt. He's out of Shelby, Montana. Perfect time for a fake here. Yeah, and, and St. John's has left their defense on the field, put Mike Zahar deep, so Blake Elliott hasn't come in. So it's just a regular defensive unit out on the field for St. John's. Zahar can return punts, has done so at times this year. The snap to Davis. Moody the ball from the Johnny 41 yard line. It'll bounce at the Johnny 5 and be down by Lacey at the goal line or not. Did he cross the end line? No, they're going to nope. mark it on the They'll mark on it the at two. the two yard line. Sam Lacey hustling down and he was able to pin the ball right at the Johnny 2 yard line. A lot of, lot of breaks going Bethel's way and another one here made on the special teams is a punt. An excellent punt landed at about the six yard line. Got a nice high bounce. Lacey hustled downfield, was under it as the ball was rolling toward the end zone. He got it stopped on the four yard line. So the Johnnies will start first and 10 from their own four. Hey Johnny fans, the best way to pay bills is at a payment center near you. Simply drop your payment into the stainless steel payment center locker located at grocery stores throughout central Minnesota. With American payment centers, it's always safe, convenient, and there's no cost. First and 10 from the four, 5.52 to go in the first quarter. Johnnies open it with a trap, and on the run is Nelson, out over the 10 to the 15, up in at about the 17 yard line. Coming up to make the stop finally and uh, taking the brunt of the collision defensively was the cornerback Jeremy Sather. First down for the Johnnies, their third of the game. But a nice run there by Nelson. Big play for St. John's getting out of the hole. Nelson coming right off the right guard. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. A big hole. Nelson gets through the hole, then cuts to the outside. Really only had one man to beat out there. The hit was made. Actually, as Nelson hit the ground, the ball popped loose, but the official called him down. First and 10, the ball on the 18-yard line of the Johnnies. Eye formation again. Tice dots the eye and gets the call. Running up the middle, he gets hammered. Got caught up in the wash. He's going to lose a couple of yards back to the 15-yard line. No hole to be made there. It's crashing through on the play was the defensive tackle Scott Westman from Tomahawk, Wisconsin for the Royals. So a little change up for St. John's. They're traditionally not an I formation team. They're coming out of the I formation to cross up Bethel. Big game. You want to give a, an opponent a different look as you come out. And that time they try and pull the left guard. But Bethel plays it well and holds them for no gain. I formation again. This time. Nelson dot in the eye behind Tice. Back to pass is Keating. Looking left, throwing left. Catch made by Klinsman. First down yardage, 30, 35, 40. Up the sideline and tripped up at the 43-yard line by Sam Lace, the defending MIHC defender of the week. But a gain on the play, enough for a first down and about uh, 26 on the game for the Johnnies. Very nice timing route. Good throw, good catch. That was one of my favorite plays at St. John's. I'm not going to tell people what it was called. But those deep outs, it always works because the receiver makes it look like he's going to run a fade. And then at the last moment, he turns back as soon as the quarterback sets up. If it's a perfect ball, you cannot defend it. Clintsman moving the ball up to the 33-yard line at a 16-yard reception, his first of the game. Keating under center here on first and 10, no score. Back to pass is Ryan. Three-step drop, throws left side, throws behind. Keating makes a one-hand grab and then is stripped to the football, but they'll say he's down at the 40-yard line. <laughs> Wow, Ooh, I didn't think he was down. I thought he was uh, still standing straight up when the football came out, yeah, but a gain on the play of seven. He was definitely standing, Mark, but uh, apparently the official felt like the whistle had blown as they were ripping at the ball, Bethel attacking the ball. Two turnovers already for St. John's, and the ball's been on the, on the field two more times so yeah. far today. Yeah, they got to degrease that big skin because it's been on the ground four times even after the play. Second down and three. The ball spotted at the 40-yard line. Johnny's left to right on your radio dial. Elliott and Klitzman split right. Keating taking his time, running the option to the right side now, and the pitch to Nelson, looking for a lane. 40, 41-yard line, 45, hurdles a would-be defender, not a bounds at about midfield. 
And again, another play of uh, close to 10 yards, depending on where they spot Nelson out of bounds, and the Johnnies with another first down, their fifth of the game. Very nice blocking by the wide receivers there, both Lee Klinsman and Blake Elliott. Blake Elliott getting a chop, Lee staying with his guy for about four seconds. You need receivers to block, and that's sort of a lost art with receivers. They just think it's catching the ball, but doing those little things makes you a great receiver. Four minutes to go in the first quarter. No scores have yet. Johnnies with another first down and move the ball to midfield. Keating changing the play here. He's got 11 seconds on the play clock, taking his time. Nelson split right. Elliott in the spot on the left side, along with Klinsman. Keating, quick throw. Nelson the catch at the Bethel 45-yard line. Lost the football. And did he get on it or not? Yes, he did. He got on it back at the Johnny 49-yard line. He was trying to stretch the ball out. I have no idea why, because he had no one to hand it to it. He had no extra yardage to gain. He was going to be well short of a first down, and he ends up losing a yard on the play totally. Yeah, well, what he was doing, Mark, was he was trying to break the tackle and using his body as leverage. The ball got away from him, from his body, and it got hit on the tackle. But, but St. John's, you know, sometimes you try too hard. The effort is so much that you allow the other team to make big plays against you. And uh, Nelson on that time, that's what he was doing. He was really extending that, extending his body to try and get the extra yards and got that ball away from his body, and it popped. Second down at 11, the ball at the 49-yard line of St. John's. That play producing a net loss of one yard. Split right is Regelman. Elliott and Klinsman to the left side. Split back to the backfield. Option left. Keating, good pitch to Tice. Tice looking for a lane. 15, he gets tripped up at the Bethel 49-yard line. Coming over there on the tackle that time for the Royals was uh, Steve Dar, quarterback, and he is down on the field. While he's down, we're going to take a quick break. Back in a minute on the Johnny Football Network. Keating sending two wide receivers to the right. Elliott and Klinsman. Regalman split left on third down and nine from the 49 of Bethel. Keating taking his time, throws over the middle, throws incomplete through behind the receiver, Elliott, who was coming open over the middle, Tom, and if he would have caught the ball, could have ran, but the ball behind him. Yeah, that's going to happen. But the point I want to make is now is when you want to have a veteran quarterback because St. John's is playing extremely tight right now. A quarterback's job right now in the huddle is to bring some levity to the group and say, listen, guys, everybody better just relax. I don't know. If, I used to tell jokes sometimes in the huddle. <laughs> you got to do something because everyone is playing very tight. That's when turnovers happen. People trying to do too much, stretching the ball out. St. John's just needs to take a big breath and relax, and that starts with the quarterback being the leader in the huddle. Charlie Carr called on to punt, the senior out of St. Cloud Apollo. Kildy back to receive for the Royals, standing on his own 11-yard line. Carr punting with a bit of a win. Gets into this one, and it's going to bounce at the 25-yard line, take a Johnny roll inside the 20, and be down finally at the 16-yard line. We'll take a quick break back in 30 on the Johnny Football Network. Porter on the toss sweep to the right side, up over the 17 to the 18 yard line before he was taken down by a couple of Johnny defenders. On that play that time, Ryan why not hustling out, the cover boy of the program, <laughs> to make the tackle. He's so embarrassed about that too. We're, <laughs> we're teasing him in the locker room about being St. John's George Clooney, sort of with that pepper <laughs> hair. Second down and eight, the ball actually to the 19 yard line on Porter's last run. He's carried the ball six times for a total of 26 yards. He's in the eye. They fake it to him. Kirkhoff almost hit as he throws, gets the pass away. Gans with a catch out over the 21-yard line to the 22. That time, Paul Gans coming up uh, to make uh, the tackle rather on Chris Evans, his first reception of the day. Evans has carried the ball a couple of times for seven yards, but that is his first reception. And how Kirkhoff got that pass away with Hood right in his face, a credit to him. He's going to be short of a first down, a gain on the play of roughly four yards, setting up third down at five from the from the Bethel 22. Jeremy Hood really looks healthy here. You know how much St. John's missed him last week in the St. Thomas game. He's making a difference already in this Bethel game. Third down at five for the 22. So far, the Royals on third down are 0 of three. One back of the backfield. And they'll give the ball to him, and that's, I believe, Muhlenberg who carries tacklers out over the 25-yard line, close to the 30. Again, on the play of almost seven yards on. In fact, that's Porta they gave it to, 25 instead of 28, but a first down for the Royals. That is their third of the game, according to our St. John's Preparatory School stat sheet, St. John's Prep, academic rigor, spiritual growth. We don't know much about Phil Porta, Mark, but uh, one thing that's apparent is he has good vision on that run because there wasn't a big hole that was there, at least not apparent from our vantage point here, and he picked his way for first down yardage. Bethel has it over the 30-yard line, first and 10. No score yet. 
Minute and a half left to go in the first quarter. Brian Chet, first and 10 from the 30 for the Royals. Wide receivers each side. Kirkhoff, toss sweep left side. Porter on the carry up over the 30 31 and turn back inside. That's where McCambridge was waiting for him and the tackle at the 32 yard line. Tom? You can just sense the defense creeping up a little bit on Bethel. You see Jeremy Hood deeper and deeper in the backfield. And St. John's defense is a rally type of defense. They're the bend but don't break cliche. But once they get rolling, they're very difficult to gain any yards on. And now you give Bethel a long field, the first one they've seen all game. St. John's gains momentum through their defense. A lot mm -hmm. of teams do it through their offense. Defense is a central part of St. John's football. I think we're going to see the defense make a big play coming up here. Two wide receivers right, one to left. And Kirkhoff will hand it off and hit in the backfield and dropped is the running back that time. That's Muhlenberg on the carry and Jeremy Hood able to it. take him down. Yep, takes him down at the 30-yard line. It'll be a loss of two as we're under a half minute here in the first quarter. And we mentioned experience on offense, and when you have somebody like Jeremy Hood on defense, experience is so key because that time the tackle in front of him pulled. He was it was like a counter trade play where the backside tackle is going to pull. He gets he reads that block, follows that blocker right to the ball carrier, gain of none on that second down play. Third down to ten now, final seconds of the first quarter. Kirkhoff three step drop throws right side pass caught by Kildy up at the thirty, and he's out of bounds at the thirty one, ending the first quarter far short of a first down. Back after this of the Johnny Football Network. Back in a minute. Fourth and eight from the 32. And back to punt is Ryan Davis. Davis. Fake. And they're going to fake. And Parnell, the quarterback, throwing down the right sideline. Pass is caught. And out of bounds is the Royal player inside Johnny territory at the 46-yard line. And coming up on the reception that time for the Royals was Kirby Carr, a linebacker, a first-year player. A.J. Parnell, the up back, he's the backup quarterback. And he was able to surprise the Johnnies on fourth down and eight. Yeah, and the thing was, I don't I don't think Zahar was that surprised by the play. He had the coverage on the play, but it looked like when he turned for the ball, he lost sight of it, kind of slowed up, and that allowed the receiver to make the catch. Bethel pulls, pulls a, a trick out of their bag of tricks and makes it work. Gain of 22 on fourth down. That is their second straight conversion on fourth down in this game. So they're one for five on third down, but get over to fourth down, and they're pretty dangerous. First and 10, the ball on the Johnny 46 yard line. I formation, Muhlenberg on the carry, run it right up the middle inside the 45 out of the 44. He's going to be brought down after a gain of roughly a yard. Why not? Demoncio there on the stop for the Johnnies. And uh, Tom, momentum is hanging right there in the middle, but that play could sway it a little bit to Bethel. Yeah, the first time Saint, uh, Bethel had a fourth down near midfield, I thought they might try a fake. Turns out the next opportunity, that's exactly what they did. This is going to be a game of momentum, and St. John's needs to make a stop here. Kildy goes split left along with Ludvigson. One wide receiver to the right side is Sean Croyle. Kirkhoff under center on second and nine for the Johnny 44. Kirkhoff hands it off. Muhlenberg on the carry. Big hole over the left side, 40. 35 and down to the 34-yard line. A first down for the Royals yet again. And holding on was Colts along with Dybel as the Johnnies exposed a little bit on that side of the football. Straight play off left guard. Just a quick dive play going just between the guard and tackle gap that time. Bethel finds a big hole. Muhlenberg gets through that hole quickly, and Bethel has it first and 10 on the St. John's 34-yard line. 14.08 left to go. Johnny's uh, losing the time of possession battle. Nine plus minutes, almost nine and a half for the Royals to just five and a half in that first quarter for St. John's. Kirkhoff, toss sweep, Muhlenberg left side. He's met and dropped at the point of attack by Cam McCambridge. McCambridge shooting the gap and dropping Muhlenberg right at the 35-yard line. It'll be a loss of one. Johnny fans. Today's broadcast brought to you by YUSA Equity Realty. YUSA Equity Realty for full service real estate with commission rates from 6 to 5 to 4% and as low as $990. For buying or selling, it's YUSA Equity Realty. 13.30 left to go in the second quarter. No score. It's second down and 11 for the Royals on the Johnny 36 yard line. They spread the field. Three wide receivers to the right, including Kildy and Lane. Kirk off of the shotgun here. Back to pass under a little bit of pressure. He's going to run it right up the middle. Fakes a throw, gets to the 35, 30, and is going to get hit at the 28-yard line and drop. Nice job blocking by the wide receiver Ludvigson. Did so to the Johnny Steffensmeyer. And a nice gain for Kirkhoff, the senior, down to the Johnny 29-yard line. Gain of seven on the play. Very nice pressure by St. John's. They get into the backfield as Kirkhoff is in the shotgun as he sets up the pass. The Johnnies are there. 
Two guys go by him. Kirkhoff steps up in the pocket, then fakes a pass, starts running out to his left. As Mark mentioned, the receiver peeled back, made a big block on Cole Dybel, allowing Kirkhoff to get six, seven yards. 12.40 left to go in the second quarter. The Johnnies and the Royals are scoreless. But Bethel on the move. Third and four for the Johnny 33, and a timeout taken by the Royals. We'll take one as well. Back in a minute on the Johnny Football Network. Third down and four, the ball at the 33-yard line of St. John's. As I said, the Royals have struggled on third down where they are one of five. But this is two down territory. Kirk off of the shotgun with two wide receivers right to the left. Now Lane comes in motion, and one of the Johnnies jumped. Quick pass into the flat. Pass caught by Lane. He's going to be hit and dropped uh, back at the 26-yard line. Actually, you're going to be a gain of about seven yards, depending on where they spot the football. The ball did come loose on the hit, but the Johnnies were offsides, giving Bethel a free play. So it'll be a penalty against the Johnnies, moving the ball down to the 24-yard line of St. John's. And they didn't take the penalty. They took the play instead, I would believe, Brian. I didn't see the official indication. Giving the Royals the uh, first down, their fifth of the game. Kirkhoff will hand it off to the fullback, and on the play, Evans stood up, little or no gain. I tell you what, they're playing to the whistle and beyond down there on the field. <laughs> There's a lot of extra blocking going on and uh, hitting, so to speak. Absolutely, and you wouldn't expect anything else. A game of this magnitude, Bethel, a very good team. Both, uh, we know how good St. John's is, so both teams fighting as hard as they can to make it happen. Bethel's had a little bit of the better of it so far here today, but the Johnnies have managed to keep them off the scoreboard. It's still 0-0 here, 11 minutes left in the second quarter. Second down and nine, the ball at the Johnny 23-yard line. Porta dotting the eye behind the big fullback, Evans. Toss sweep, Porta trying to get to the outside, and he's going to get hit and dropped by DeMonso. It's going to be no gain on the play. In fact, maybe a loss of one when they spot the football back at the 24-yard line. It's like running into one of these crowds you see here at Clemens Stadium and nowhere to go. Absolutely. It, actually, the play was made at the point of attack by Steffensmeyer as he took on the lead block, forced that running back to cut back to the middle. Damian Dumanso had shed his block at that time. Big, big hit on the back. Brings up third and nine here for Bethel. Ball again at the Johnny 23. They give him forward momentum right back to the line of scrimmage. Porta dotting the eye. Kildy to the right. Jeff Lane split left. Kirkhoff under center with 11 on the play clock. Three-step drop, throwing the fade. Right side for Kildee, and he's up into the end zone. Touchdown. Zahar lost the ball as it was in the air, and Kildee able to come up with a touchdown reception, his seventh of the year, putting the Royals on top six to nothing. Simple short set there by Kirkhoff. He just takes three-step drops, a straight fade pattern. Kildee beats, well, Zahar was there, but again, a little late in getting, finding the ball as he was turning his head. A little bit of complaining here to the officials, like maybe he was pushed. We don't have a good angle as to whether that happened, but Kildee did make the catch. Kirkhoff, the good throw, and Bethel leads here 6 0 with 10.46 remaining in the first half. It's the second ball Zahar's lost. It's a very high sky. There's no depth, no clouds. Uh, could become a factor. Extra point try is up, and the Royals take a 7 0 lead. We're back in a minute on the Johnny Football Network. Paul Cheddar ready to kick off for the Royals, who struck first. A 14 play, 83 yard drive at 7 11, a squib kick here. And one of the Johnny's backups will pick up the football. Charlie Wells, freshman quarterback, and he is into the open. Actually, it's Dano Wagner up over the 35 to the 38 yard. You love those double numbers. And the <laughs> Dano. Dano Wagner, the outstanding linebacker, moving the ball out for the Johnnies up over the 35 to where they'll start with their best position of the day to the 38 yard line. Tom? Dano's been hurt all year. We saw flashes of Dano last year as a freshman get out of Hastings. He's a good player, but he's had a shoulder problem for most of the year. Well, the Johnnies will try to answer that 14 play. 83 yard drive. In seven minutes, 11 seconds, Kirkhoff to Kildee. 23 yards out to put the Royals on top, seven zip. Keating will hand it off. And this time on the carry, Nelson up to the 40-yard line, running over right guard, a gain of two. St. John's and a half very to go. content. Excuse me, St. John's very content to run on first down, trying to get a couple yards. But the successful plays they have had have been the deep outs when they've thrown the ball downfield a little bit. And I tried to make the point uh, in the last segment. There are no clouds in the sky. It's a very difficult game for corners to pick up the ball. The receiver knows what route he's running. The corner has to pick it up. Downfield passing could be the answer. 
Keating back to pass. Seven step drops. Got time. Airing it out. Right side. Caught by Elliott at the 50. And he's out of bounds right there. Gain on the play of 10 yards. First down for the Johnnies. And right on cue, St. John's comes with a deep out. As Tom mentioned earlier, you, you want your wide receiver to sell the deep pass, sell the fly, get that corner backed off. The Johnnies running it so far very crisply, that out pattern. The ball's in the air as the receiver's making his cut. No danger of an interception. Ryan Keating is really on target here today. Say they're pushing Elliott out of bounds, but again, the first down. Blake Elliott with his third catch, 27 yards. With the whole first half of the Tommy game without a catch for positive yards. Keating back to pass, seven-step drop. Looks left side, throws. Klinsman the catch inside the 40, down to the Bethel 38-yard line before he was brought down by Steve Darr, the cornerback. First down, Johnny's again on the gain of 13. And again, going to the well with that deep out pattern. And again, Ryan Keating is right on target. That tells you he's feeling good and confident today. It's telling you the offensive line is doing its job to give him time so he can really step into that out pass. So it'll be first and 10 for the Johnny's. Ball actually spotted at the Bethel 38-yard line. Tice, Klinsman, Elliott split right. One back at the backfield is Nelson. Leonard split left. Keating back to pass. The blitz is on. Shovel pass. Nelson with a catch inside the 35 down about there. As he tried to get around the offensive lineman, Diley, who was locked up in a one-on-one -on -one battle with a defensive tackle, Westman, and he couldn't do it. That play could have gone for big yardage. I down. love that play call. And in fact, Ryan and I were talking about that exact play in the training room. Bethel's going to be very aggressive. That Lacey kid's a good player. He's going to come. St. John's throwing the shovel pass underneath. You could see that play again, and in fact, I think you might later this afternoon, Mark. Second down and six after the gain of four, down to the Bethel 35-yard line. Actually, more like second down and seven. Three wide receivers right, one to the left is Regelman. Keating blitzes on again, back to pass, steps up in the pocket, he's got time, will air it out, long over the middle, pass caught by Nelson inside the 15, and he's hit down at about the 14-yard line, and he is hurt. He is really hurt. He really got popped on that play. And he did some damage to his hip, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure which Bethel Royal laid the hit, if it was Dar, the cornerback, or the linebacker, Kirby Carr. But uh, ooh, Josh Nelson in a world of hurt down there on the field. That allows us to take a quick timeout. First down for the Johnnies when we come back in a minute on the Johnny Football Network. And off to Jason Good as uh, Nelson was able to get off the field okay. And he's brought down after no gain. In fact, possibly a loss of one. Sam Lacey crashing the play and able to make the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Moving the ball back to the 15-yard line. It'll actually be second down and 12 from the 15. And tell you what, we saw Josh Nelson pop up off the field. He looked okay. We'll have to see what happens uh, when we talk to Jimmy at the half. Regalman split right. Tice lone back of the backfield. Nelson back out there. So apparently he was not seriously hurt. Quick pass to Elliott inside the five on his feet at the two. Touchdown, Johnny from 15 yards out of the slant. That play was an automatic audible for Ryan Keating. No one covering Blake Elliott off the line of scrimmage. Doesn't matter what play is called, he's getting the ball. As soon as the ball is snapped, the ball is airborne. Blake making just one move into the end zone. Great recognition by Keating and Elliott. And crisp timing. Great recognition by two players because they both knew it was coming and that ball was underway before Bethel knew it had been snapped. Blake breaks the first tackle, shakes off another one, and then gets into the end zone. 7-6, Bethel leading with the St. John's extra point coming. Brandon Keller, who made two great field goals last week. The extra point is blocked, though. It's up in the air, and underneath it, returning the ball is Steve Darr up to the 10, 15, 20, up the right sideline, 30, 35-yard uh, line, 40. Now looking to pitch it back and does. To Sather, the cornerback, the ball is loose, and the Johnny's going to cover it, but trail 7-6 after the missed extra point. And we're back in a minute on the Johnny Football Network. The ball picked up by Muhlenberg on the kickoff, and he had problems doing that. It was squib back to him. Johnny's hit him hard, almost popping the ball out, but it's going to be Bethel taking over at the 19-yard line. Ryan Keating with his 17th touchdown pass. Elliott his ninth touchdown reception to pull the Johnnies to within one, but that extra point missed. So it come up big last week. St. Thomas putting one on the upright and uh, putting one off the upright. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. And then Bethel, the rule in college football, of course, is the defensive team can return an extra point, gain two points for themselves. 
Bethel, a well-coached team, tries to do that, even a couple laterals along the way, but the Johnnies do cover them. Hand off here, Porta on the carry up over the 20, spins his way to the 23, 24 yard line. First tackle by Why Not, I believe. Uh, no, check that, Dumancho had him, could not wrap up on him. And Porta ahead for about three yards, setting up second down at seven from the Bethel 24 yard line. Obviously, though, a big offensive drive for St. John's to answer the Bethel score with a drive of their own. St. John's hasn't had the ball a whole lot this half because of turnovers and then time of possession. Good running, uh, uh, good job running the football by Bethel. So the Johnnies answer the score, and now let's see if the defense can get a three and out. Second down and six, the ball at the Bethel 24, handoff on the draw. And Porter with a big hole up over the 30, 35 yard line to the 36. They are finding some holes in the Johnny run defense. Stephens Meyer on the tackle, got some help from his brother, Tony. Tony and Jamie combining on the tackle, but a first down for the Royals. They move the ball 11 yards. And Bethel taking advantage of an aggressive St. John's defense as the Johnnies feel like it's a passing situation. They come hard for the pass rush. Bethel has the right play call, but inside draw. They pick up big yards and have it first and 10 on their own 36 yard line. Royals send two wide receivers to the right. Ludvigson is one of them. Along with Croyle, toss sweep, left side. Porta on the carry up over the 40 to the 41 yard line. They like running on that left side of the Johnny Run defense. They found something there that seems to work, and that'll be a gain of close to four. And they've been patient with it, Mark and Tom, because e even when it hasn't worked, they haven't thrown the play out. They've come back to it time and time again. Oftentimes, they run that play on first down, and this time they get five yards. So it'll be second down and five. The ball at the Bethel 41-yard line. And a 14-play drive culminating in a touchdown the last time they touched the football. Eye formation here. Porter lining up behind Evans with two wide receivers right. Give to Porter the freshman again, and he's upended. Actually, that's Muhlenberg who just checked in. Up over the 40 to the 43-yard line. Why not? Getting a piece from as to Jeremy Hood and uh, Matt Darling. It's a little bit of, of a different Bethel team than we've seen in the past. They're staying patient with the run. As their statistics indicated coming into this game, usually, uh, especially under Chris Might as their offensive coordinator, they were throw, 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 and run as an afterthought. But we're seeing a very patient Bethel team content to pick up three, four yards on a play, set up a situation like we have here, third and two. Yep, third and two for the 44. Kirk off of the shotgun, rolling left, throwing, and the pass is caught. The receiver, Jeff Lane, inside Johnny Territory, up over the 50 down to the 47-yard line. A gain on the play of nine, and another first down for the Royals. That'll be their ninth of the game, tying the Johnnies in that department on our St. John's Preparatory School stat sheet. And when you can diversify your attack, you create wider angles to throw to, and that's what Kirkhoff did there. He just got the ball just out the outstretched hands of Jamie Steffensmeyer on the underneath coverage on that out, and the ball is complete, and Bethel has yet another first down. First down to 10, the ball on the Johnny 47-yard line. Two wide receivers right, one to the left for the Royals. Give Muhlenberg running off right tackle. Just a tiny hole there, and he slips through it down to the Johnny 44-yard line. Gans there and Dumanso, and we've got a play in the defensive secondary, and I was watching the bodies. It's going to be on Thielman. It's going to be a late hit. It's been going on all game between both sides. In fact, Ryan Wana just talked to the umpire uh, on the last play, complaining for the second time that I saw him do it about a late hit. A lot of chippiness going on. Personal it's got to stop. Yep, personal foul against the Johnnies. Nick Thielman, apparently. Well, what's, what's happening, I think it actually was Tony Steffensmeyer on the far side of the field, but what, what's happening is the Bethel receivers come, come out hard and they attack the St. John's corners, even on running plays, and they block, 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 and then they go down low and cut them at the very end of the play, and St. John's is trying to fight that off. At that time, Steffensmeyer, after the whistle had blown, kind of took an extra shot into that wide receiver, and that drew the threw the flag from the far side official. And a 15 yard walk off against the Johnnies moving the ball down to the Johnny 29. One back in the backfield, Kirkhoff. Back to pass on first down, throwing a post into the end zone. Ludwig's in the catch. Touchdown Royals. They ran away from Steffensmeyer and the Royals take the lead 13 to six. A uh, nice play by Kirkhoff because what he did was he looked right, right, right. And what that did was that drew uh, Jeremy Goltz, our free safety, to the right side of the field, and then he came back to the backside post pattern. That receiver had beaten our corner on that side, was wide open, crossed the goal line, untouched, 13-6 here. Bethel leading, 525 left in the half. A big play on this extra point because the Johnnies are down seven right now. If they can hold on the extra point and keep this touchdown extra point deficit. Seven plays, 80 yards, and done in two minutes, 33 seconds, and the extra point is up. And good, 14 to six our score. The Royals on top with 5.25 to go on the Johnny Football Network. 5.25 left to play in the second quarter. 
Ball booted into the air. Elliott running up on it, takes it at the 19. 25, up the middle, and the 30-yard line is where he is put down by the Royals. The Johnnies will start there first and 10. Johnny fans, if you're looking to do some hunting this fall, definitely want to take care of your feet. The best way to do that is with a Irish Center Sport boot. All of their hunting footwear at Red Wing Shoes is on sale right now, at least $30 off. Red Wing Shoes in the Midtown Square, where fit comes first. Competitive prices and unbeatable service. Big sale going on there. First and 10 for the 30. Johnny spread the field. Three wide receivers right. Flenner split left. Back to pass Keating. Into the flat. Pass is caught by Tice. Looking for some room to run. Gets up over the 30, 31 yard line. And Tice again giving up the football. But it goes out of bounds, converging out of the play. Sam Lacey, the talented defensive back. I also give credit to the Royals defensive backfield man. Actually, the corner, the outside linebacker, Kirby Carr, out of Fergus Falls, closing quickly. And just a gain of two on that play, setting up second down and eight. Lacey, the strong safety, coming on a blitz that time from the far side of the field. The Johnnies had a screen pass to the other side of the field. Lacey ran that play down from behind. Split back to the backfield on second down and eight. Keating to throw here. He's got plenty of time, rolling to his left, now looking for a receiver to come back, and throws right side, pass caught by Elliott at the 33, 35, 40, Elliott still on his feet, breaks a tackle at the 45, Elliott midfield, Elliott to the Bethel, 45, 40, stiff arms, Dars, he goes out of bounds, right at the Johnny, make that the Bethel 34-yard line. Well, you need your big play, playmaker to make a play, and that's what Blake Elliott did on that time. Excellent protection by the St. John's offensive line, and good, the fullback, as he picked up a blitzing Lacey again, that gave Ryan Keating, lots of time, lots of time. He held the ball a long time. Saw Blake Elliott across the field, came back to him, and a big, big run after the catch for Blake. 34 yards on the reception and a first down for the Johnnies. Elliott with his fifth catch for 76 yards, and he has one score already. That is ninth touchdown reception this year. He split right along with Klinsman. First and 10, the ball on the Bethel 34. Royal showing blitz. Johnnies run right into it. Good on the carry, and he gets hit after he's down. No flag thrown, however. Laying the extra wood was Jake Schneider, the linebacker. Coming right up the middle that time, inside trap run by St. John's. Good, the ball carrier, and Bethel is right there. St. John's has been able to run the football just a little bit to keep Bethel off balance, but no big plays in the running game have we seen thus far in the first half. No gain for good that time, and it's second down and 10. Four and a half left to go. Two wide receivers right. Flenner split left. Keating, back to pass, rolling to his right. He's got some time as the blitz picked up, throws right, caught by Elliott at the 30, 29, 25, dancing on the sidelines, and out of bounds at about the 21-yard line, making the 22, gain on the play of 12, and a first down for the Johnnies. And a clear-out pattern run by Lee Klinsman. The corner stays with Lee deep. Blake Elliott just sits, sits down behind him. He really was open early. Keating finally found him, dumped it off to him. Blake made the rest happen after the catch, dancing a lot down the sideline. St. John's has it deep in Bethel territory. First and 10 at the Bethel 22-yard line. Johnny's will send Klinsman and Elliott split left. Regalman to the right side. Split backs to the backfield with Good and Nelson. Keating rolling to his left. He's got some time. Throws, pass, incomplete. Through low, bouncing it into Klinsman that time, but he points to himself. That was his own own fault there, Tom. Yeah, he sent Blake on a post corner route there, hoping that Bethel's defense would carry them towards him in the end zone, and it did. Lee Klinsman was open with a little hitch. Just Ryan misfired on that one. Something that St. John's will come back to, I'm sure. But that's a play as a quarterback that just kills you. Timeout by Bethel. We'll take one as well. Back in a minute, Johnny's trail, 14 to six on the Johnny Radio Network. Johnny's football continues on the Johnny Football Network. St. John's trailing 14 to 6, but on the move, they have the ball. Second down at 10 at the Bethel 22 yard line. Regalman, as well as Klinsman and Elliott, lined up at a triangle left side. Keating back to pass on second at 10. He's got time. Rolling to his left. Gets some extra time now. Rolling to his right. Throws back over the middle. Incomplete. Trying to put enough under the ball, Brian, to get it to Nelson, who is coming open over the middle, but. Uh, the Bethel coverage, very good on that play. Very good. Lee Klinsman was actually open, Mark, initially on the far side of the field, but Ryan's reads were taking him away as he was looking for Blake Elliott down the field. Eventually, Klinsman was covered by the backside corner as Keating scrambled off to his right. Nelson was coming back open over the middle, but Ryan Keating could not set his feet to deliver the football. Third down at 10. The ball at the Bethel 22-yard line. Johnny's right to left on your radio dial. Back to passes, Keating looks right, throws right for Elliott, makes the catch at the 11, and he's out of bounds there. Pushed out of bounds by the defensive back for the Royal Sather. 
He's eaten him up on a couple of plays and comes up with 11 yards and a first down for the Johnnies. As they are looking to strike and possibly tie this game with a two-point conversion trailing 14-6. Johnny fans, Johnny football brought to you by the Engel Law Firm. Attorneys Greg Engel and Tom Kramer, both SJU alumni, whose practice includes the areas of family law, real estate, and mediation services. Call the Engel Law Firm at 320-253-3700. Nelson wide right on first and 10 from the 11-yard line. Just under four minutes to go, 14-6. to six, The Royals on top, three wide receivers left. Keating back to pass, looking left, now back over the middle, throws over the middle, the pass almost intercepted. Tipped away from Jason Good, the running back. And coming up was Kirby Carr, the linebacker, and he may have got a piece of that one, Brian. Yeah, in, in what St. John's did that time, what happens, the closer you get to the goal line, of course, the closer you are to the end line. And so the distance between the safety and the underneath receivers is reduced. That time, Ryan checks down to Good in the backfield in the safety. Even though he's playing safety, he's, a, he's able, because of the short distance, to come out, deflect that ball away. Regalman split right, Klinsman to the left, along with Elliott. Second and 10 from the 11-yard line. Keating rolling to his left. He's got some time. Throws incomplete. Again, he short hops the football. Klinsman, the intended receiver, with Steve Darr on the coverage, and that'll bring up third down and 11. The Johnnies on third down so far, two up three this afternoon. And you look at the time of possession. Bethel owning the football over 16 minutes compared to nine and a half for St. John's. On our St. John's Preparatory School stat sheet, call St. John's Prep for academic support, spiritual growth, and admissions information at 363-3321. Ryan Keating is really throwing the ball, the ball well, Mark, but he's able to set his feet in the pocket, pocket. But so far, rolling left, we've seen twice where he's thrown the ball short, even though he's had receivers open. Third and 10 from the 11. Keating back to pass. Five-step drop. Looking right. Throwing over the middle. Pass caught by Regalman. Touchdown, Johnnies. Oh, he looked off the safety there, and Regalman wide open in the end zone. The Johnnies are within two points of tying this football game. And the Johnnies holding up two, so they'll go for two. But again, as Kirkhoff did on the last drive, Keating that time looking far right, the far side of the field to Blake Elliott. That draws the coverage that direction, and Jed Regalman breaks his pattern off over the middle. Keating spots him, delivers the ball perfectly, as he's done all day from the pocket. And the Johnnies are on the scoreboard again. The score, fans, is 14 to 12 here. 3.45 left in the first half. And St. John's will take a timeout here and talk about their two-point conversion play. We'll take a quick timeout back in 30. 30 on the Johnny Football Network. So the try for two for the Johnnies, who just scored on Regalman's second touchdown reception of the year. The 18th touchdown pass thrown by Ryan Keating. Interesting, Mark. The Johnnies have had the ball placed on the left hash mark of the field to give themselves more room to the right side. And that's where Elliott and Klinsman will line up, split right, split back to the backfield, good, and Nelson. Keating rolling to his right, got a little bit of pressure, and he is going to be hit as he throws, throws back into the end zone, the pass is intercepted. He was trying to get it and force it to Klinsman, but he was under a lot of pressure. He had Flenner standing right in the middle of the field, and he could not get it to him. We'll take another quick break. Back in 30 with a kickoff on the Johnny Football Network. Johnny's kicking off after able to come up with a 10-play, 70-yard drive at a minute 40. Culminating in the Regalman touchdown reception. And the Johnnies will kick off now. And on Muhlenberg on the return up over the 20, 25-yard line. He's got a lane 30. 35, we've got a penalty flag down the, the ball. ball is loose, and it's still loose. loose. And the Royals are going to come up with it at the 32-yard line. St. John's trailing 14-12 against the Bethel Royals on the Johnny Football Network. The Johnny's almost able to capitalize as the ball came loose from Muhlenberg. What a huge play that would have been. The ball was loose, and then all of a sudden, somebody's foot hit it, and it squirted back toward the St. John's goal line. And that's when you heard Mark and I in unison say, nobody's on it, still loose. But Bethel did fall on it. I don't think most of the Johnnies knew it was loose. That was the problem again, right there. Yeah, and again, like last week at St. Thomas, the ball was loose facing the, the big portion of the stadium here. So everybody saw it on the ground. The players on the field scrambling around. Bethel, though, able to cover it. Now we have a big series for our defense. Three minutes, 34 seconds left to go in the first half. Johnny's trailing 14 to 12. Kirkhoff fakes a handoff, rolls left as he was in the shotgun, throws. Ludvigson to catch up over the 35, 40-yard line. And out of bounds, they'll say just inside the 40, the ball at the 39. And Kirkhoff, maybe a little hampered. Uh, he was trying to stretch a little bit as he released that football. May have 
possibly pulled something or aggravated an injury. 16 yards on the completion and a first down for the Royals. Kirkhoff on the day. He is 6 of 7, 84 yards, two scores. Uh, I'd say that qualifies him for being on today. Kirkhoff is an experienced quarterback and a well-designed play that time for Bethel. Layered pattern, so they flooded the far side of the field zones. Receivers at 5, 10, and about 25 yards. He hits the middle one for first down yardage. Kirkhoff hands it off here on the carry. Porter, he's going to get eaten up by Jeremy Hood. Mr. Hood, welcome to the party as he slams him down at the 40-yard line. Also, Paul Gans coming through and able to lay the wood as well. Little or no gain on that play. It'll be second down now. And nine, the ball right at the Bethel 40-yard line. One wide receiver to the right, Kildy. Two wide receivers lined up left. One back of the backfield is Porter. Kirkhoff on second down at 10. The ball at the 40. Three-step drop throws. Left side. Pass was caught. And on the catch that time is uh, Jeff Lane, the wide receiver out at short view, Minnesota. Moving the ball about nine yards. Setting up third down at short. Colts coming up on the tackle that time for St. John. Saving what could have been an even bigger play as there was room to run if that tackle could have been broken. And another crisp play from Bethel. A short set, three-step drop. Lane, the far side receiver on the Bethel sideline, running a slant pattern. The space opens up. Kirkhoff puts it in that space. Lane makes the catch. Third and short here coming for Bethel. Bethel, three of seven on third down. Have a third and two here for the 48. Toss sweep right side. Porter trying to get to the outside and can't. He stopped by Why Not, the cover boy. Give a lot of credit to Cam McCambers, though. He forced Porter to change direction. And there was Mr. Wynott ready to lay the wood and clean up the play. Well, we mentioned earlier, Bethel not afraid to run outside on their short yardage plays. And what happens when you run outside? You pitch that ball back five or six yards. I tell you, it drives my wife nuts when we call that play ourselves. And you're giving up that five or six yards so if the Johnny penetration can get in there. They are able to tackle him in the backfield. And that time, even though they had short yardage to go, they picked up none. The Johnnies are forcing a punt here. Bethel is letting the clock run. There's a minute 35 and counting left. I think they'll uh, maybe go for it. Kirkhoff is staying on the field. So Kirkhoff of the offense staying on the field on fourth and two. Bethel with the ball at their own 48-yard line. And they're going to call timeout. We'll take one as well. Johnny's trail 14 to 12. Back in a minute on the Johnny Football Network. Big play, fourth down and two. The ball at the 48 yard line of the Royals. Kirkhoff under center with two wide receivers to each side. Kirkhoff, three step drop, throws left side, the pass incomplete. Zahar making a play on the ball and the receiver. That time it was Jeff Lane, and the Johnnies will start with a short field as they hold on downs. What a gamble by Bethel. Steve Johnson not afraid to, to take the gamble. He did earlier, it paid off with the fake punt. This time he goes for it out of the regular offensive formation. It does not pay off. Bethel tries a quick slant pass, just a two-step drop, uh, two drop that time for Kirkhoff. Great coverage on that corner. The ball's knocked away, and St. John's is in business here. One minute, 21 seconds left in the half. Two wide receivers right, one to the left. Option right side, Keating. Quick pitch here. Nelson on the carries, running downhill. 45, 40, and out of bounds. Smart play by the senior at about the 39-yard line. Could be enough close to a first down, depending on where they jump. Nope, they're going to spot him about a yard short, back two yards short, back at the 40-yard line is where they mark him out of bounds. But with a minute 16 to go, it's not only how far you can move the football, but how much time you can do it in. That's right. And St. John's has used a timeout to talk about the two-point conversion. So important for Nelson to get out of bounds that play. Actually, the play created by Goods block on the corner that time laid him out. Minute 16 to go. It was the first... Second down at two from the 40. Quick pass, Elliott with a catch out to the 33-yard line. A gain of seven, a first down for the Johnnies, so the clock will stop for just a little bit while the chains are moved. That'll give the Johnnies time to huddle up and call a quick play. They trail 14 to 12, minute 11 left to go before the half. Mark Ryan Keating is really playing well, and it's great to see. He didn't have a great game last week against St. Thomas, did some things really well, but made three interceptions. And this game, he seems to be really on. Two wide receivers, Ryan, one left. Minute six to go and count it. Keating back to pass on first down. Pump fake going long, left sideline, and Klinsman is pushed down, and there's the flag. Dar got locked up with Klinsman, and he pushed him down. Big call that time. The Johnnies, I figured they'd try it, the out and up pass, because they've thrown that out so many times and completed it that time. Keating pump fakes the out pass. Good, uh, good. Klinsman turns, turns up field, and he gets bumped right out of his pattern as he turns up field. The referee calling that the ball was already in the air through the flag. Now, there is a discussion about the ball being catchable, but really, we, we'll never know no. because Klinsman got bumped off his route. Steve Johnson out on the field, and they're saying uncatchable. Uncatchable ball, really a tough and, call for St. John's. And they're Keating, picking up their... That is... Uh, 
Uh, how about defensive holding? We'll compromise. It's a first down at five yards. <laughs> Yeah, we'll call that down to the official. But it, it is tough, Mark. As you say, Lee Klinsman, we've seen him run down a lot of balls. There was a lot of air under that football, so he may have had a chance to do it. But the Johnnies will have to overcome that official's call. Klinsman, Elliott, and Flinter split left on third down to 10. The ball at the Bethel 31-yard line. Keller, by the way, would be kicking with a bit of a win where the Johnnies have to try a field goal. Nelson in motion out to the right side. Keating back to pass. Throws over the middle. Pass is caught by Regal, but inside the 10 down to the... Six yard line, he had to fight the linebacker on that play and doing a great job against Jake Schneider coming up over him to grab the football and pull it in for the first down yardage at a gain of 25. And it was one of those plays, fans, where Jake Schneider, the linebacker, had his body turned toward Regalman, and Regalman, of course, was turned toward Keating, the quarterback, when the ball was up in the air. Schneider did not know it was coming. Keating does an excellent job putting that ball up in the air where Regalman can go up and get it. Johnny's now have it first and goal, 46 seconds left in the first half. They officially spot the ball at the eight-yard line. Three wide receivers left, one to the right. Keating back to pass, looking right, throwing for Regalman. No, he's going to run the football inside the five down to the four, and the Johnnies need to get a timeout here. The Johnnies need a timeout, and Flutter smart to call it to the officials' attention with 33 seconds left to go. We'll take a quick break as well. An exciting first half it's been. The Johnnies have trailed 7-0 and 14-6, but they're within two points of taking the lead. Three points, actually, of taking the lead as they trail 14-12 with 33 seconds left to go. They called their second timeout, so they have one left. Regalman split right. It'll be second and goal. The ball at the five-yard line. Elliott in the slot left side along with Klinsman. And we're going to run the option. Quick pitch, Keating to Nelson looking for a lane. He can't find it. And he's down to about the four-yard line. Somebody's foot uh, lost the shoe. <laughs> I believe that was uh, Nelson. Or check that. No, that's one of the defensive players, Peter Eastland. And the Johnnies call timeout again, and we'll take one as well. Back in 30, the Johnnies trail 14 to 12 on the Johnny Football Network. Four seconds left in the first half. St. John's knocking on the door, third and goal from the four. Mark, that was really good play that time initially for St. John's because the way the Bethel defense was set up, it looked like you could run the ball left. At the last instant, they brought somebody up, so that option play, which looked to be there, ended up not being there. So now St. John's has it third and goal to go from just inside the five-yard line. Good out there. He'll be in the backfield with Nelson. The Johnnies out of timeouts now, so you would think a pass play rather than run and try then to get the field goal unit on if they cannot score. Klinsman wide right along with Regelman and Nelson. He's in the slot on the right side with Klinsman. Elliott double covered on the left side. Keating under center here on third and goal from the four. Seven step drop. He's got time. Looks right. Throws right for Elliott. Makes the catch of the two. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. He took the defender, Peter Eastland, the strong safety, all the way across the field. Brian made the catch and put the Johnnies in the lead. Keating and Elliott make the play, but actually the play is made by the offensive line because they allow Ryan Keating to sit in that pocket and they allow Blake Elliott to go from the far left side of the field all the way across the middle to the far right side of the field. He beats his man gets through the middle of the field, and then Keating, when he gets to that other side, puts the ball in the air. It's a touchdown for St. John's. They lead 18 to 14 here in the first half. Bethel gambled, it didn't pay off, and the Johnnies make it pay for them. Keller on to attempt the extra point. Good snap to Zahar, the kick is off, but the kick is good! And the Johnnies take a 19 to 14 lead. Back in a minute on the Johnny Football Network. Brandon Keller will kick off. And back to receive the kickoff, John Kildee as well as Ross Muhlenberg. Both have game-breaking speed, and that's why Keller will squib it. Kildee running up on it at the 15 to the 20. Turns left, 25, 30-yard line, out to the 32, 33, 35. The Johnnies finally wear him down with 10 seconds left to go in the first half. St. John's on top, 19 to 14. Brandon Keller with a clinic and squib kicking. That ball hit the turf, hit the turf again, and then two or three more times, allowing the coverage to get down quickly. A good return by Bethel, though, 35-yard line. But with 10.7 seconds left in the half, I don't know how much damage you can do from your own 35-yard line. Now Bethel with an explosive offense. They come out and line up in the eye, though, thinking that maybe they'll just take a knee and, or run a play up the middle. Gant, Evans, the fullback, rather. 
And instead, Kirkhoff's going to throw. Looking right, throwing right, airing it out for Kildee. And it's caught. Incomplete. Down at the 25-yard line of the Johnnies with about four seconds to go before the half. Kirkhoff getting a lot of air under that football, and Kildee kind of had to wait on it. And by that time, Zahar and Gans and Golds were all over there trying to defend. I was holding my breath, Mark, because Kildee had gotten by Zahar, and the angle Jeremy Golds took to the play was not a good one, and Kildee was alone by himself deep if that ball had been on target. It was a dangerous play. Kirkhoff possibly running the final play of the half, sends Littlebickson left side along with Jeff Lane. Split to the right is Croyle. One back of the backfield, Porta, two tight end setup. Back to pass now is Kirkhoff. Hood pressuring him. And now DeMonso doing the same. Kirkhoff turns it upfield, gets hit from behind, and that's how the first half will come to an end. With the Johnnies with great defensive pressure in the backfield, taking Kirkhoff down right at the line of scrimmage. Funny story, Mark, because uh, whatever we have here, 12, 15,000, but uh, one, of the, one of the people, fans that I ran into said, uh, asked his father if he'd like to go along in St. John's games, and he said, you know what? I love going to those St. John's games. They're great. He said, I'll go, but, you know, I haven't seen him since Gallardi's taken over as coach. <laughs> 51 years. <laughs> Squib kick taken by one of the upbacks and going immediately to the turf for the Royals is Justin Uran. He's a backup fullback from Lakeville. And he's going to start the Royals out after the squib kick right on their own. Looks to be about the 24, 25 yard line. And a clinic again in squib kicking for St. John's is uh, Brandon Keller, the hero of last week. Yep. Now doing kickoff duty, puts the ball on the ground, makes that fullback just fall on it, and Bethel takes over on their own 26 yep. yard line. The market officially at the 26, Kildee, as well as Lane split right. Kirk off of the first half, 7 of 10, 92 yards, and a couple of scores. Eye formation. Kirk off, rolling to his right. He's got pressure. He's going to be hit and drop back in the 20. Dumanso, the diesel, revving it up and coming in and taking him down along with Wynott. And Kirk off favoring his ankle as he gets up. He might, he might be hurting Jeremy Hood, the kind Johnny, helping him off the field. And Kirk off waving in the backup quarterback, A.J. Parnell. As he's trying to walk off what would be a rolled ankle. Now he tells him to stay on the sideline. But the coaches send in the backup quarterback, A.J. Parnell. <laughs> and Kirkhoff tells him to get off the field. Get out of here. I'm staying in. He's able to walk it off. He, he turned his ankle, tweaked it a little bit in the first half. And that play, Damian broke right through, slid inside the guard. Kirkhoff was trying to roll a little bit to his right. Damian all over him. Kirkhoff turns his ankle but stays in the game. DeMonto's third and a half sack of the year. Handoff to the fullback and going nowhere is Evans. The Johnny defense starting to stuff it right at the point of attack at the 20. So after a loss of roughly four on the play, no gain on the run up the middle, brings up third down and long. Bethel had been pretty consistent in their play calling, running on first down in the first half. Some success, in fact, enough success so that they'd have four, five, six yards of play. But on the first down and to open the second half, they run a pass play. Dumanso makes a sack, so that... That brings up second and 12. They try and run. The Johnnies are there, third and 14. Third down and 14. Back to the guy. Kirkhoff back to pass, throwing a pop pass over the middle. It's caught by the tight end. Scrabeck with a catch up over the 40 to the 41 yard line. Looked like the Johnnies were going to be able to make a play on it. Zahar was able to get a hand on the football, but give Scrabeck the tight end all the credit in the world to haul that one in. His 14th catch on the year. First in this game, it's a gain of 20 and a first down for the Royals. Boy, Zahar came really close. It looked like he had his hand on the ball yep. and was batting it to the turf, but the tight end made the catch. A looping pass by Kirkhoff over the middle, over the linebacker's head to his tight end. Because the ball hung in the air, that allowed Zahar, the left corner, to get to the middle of the field to attempt to knock it down, but Bethel does make the play, and they have it first and 10. On the 42-yard line. Kirkhoff hands it off. Big hole for Porter up over the 45 to the 46-yard line. Looked to be a bigger play, but Cam McCambridge and Jamie Steffensmeyer, the Johnny's leading tackler, able to slow that play down. And, uh, Tom, you were down on the sidelines with some of the players at the half and their mood and feeling coming into the second half here. Yeah, I think St. John's went into the locker room with a ton of momentum. And I think part of that is the Cowboy bravado call at the end of the first half, fourth and two to go for it. You punt the ball when you have the lead. And that sort of type of mistake led St. John's to score and now have the lead and go up. 
High formation here, second down to six of the 46. Kirkhoff hands it off to the fullback, and carrying the ball is Evans up to the 49-yard line where Gans takes him down with help from McCambridge. Gain on the play of three will bring a third down and short for the Royals. And the point I want to make about that is this is the second week in a row that a major coaching decision has been made against St. John's. Coaches want to make a big play. Last week it was Roney calling the intentional safety. That right. came back to bite him. This week, Johnson going forward on fourth and two. These are the type of decisions that separate a close game and put the ball into St. John's favor. You cannot make those mistakes against St. John's. The Royals, four of nine on third down, making one earlier on this drive. Handed off to Porta on third and short. He's got the first down. He's inside the Johnny 48, down to the 47-yard line. No doubt about it, Phil Porta doing a nice job on the ground. Now has 18 carries for 63 yards and another first down for the Royals, their 14th of the afternoon. And Bethel getting back into the running game. Three straight runs on that set of downs as Bethel opened the half with a pass and then on third down made the big completion of the tight end for first down. Come back on that series, run three consecutive plays, pick up 11 yards, and they get a first down here. They're just inside St. John's territory. John Croyle split left. He's a tall wide receiver at six foot four, 182 pounds. And Kirkhoff back to pass on first and 10. Going long for Croyle, and the pass is knocked into the area incomplete. Jeremy Gold sandwiching the wide receiver along with Thielman, the cornerback. And the Johnnies defend, bringing up second down at 10 for the 47. I'll tell you what, the wide receiver, Croyle, is injured, allowing us to take a quick break. Back in a minute on the Johnny Football Network. 11.32 left to go. The Johnnies on the defensive here, second and 10 for the Royals on the 47-yard line. Mark Lewandowski, Brian Back is Tom Littleman in the booth for this MIAC championship game. High formation, Porta dots the high behind Evans. Wide receivers each side, Kirkhoff coming, wide receiver sweep, Kildee on the carry. And the Johnnies oh. trying to string it out, 45 down to the 40, flag down. It's gonna be a block in the back against the lineman, <laughs> Tim Lawrence. Three flags dot the play, and this one's coming back. Even the Rat Pack getting into it with the flags. Again, that place, it looks like my room there with a bunch of laundry on the floor. <laughs> Their flags came from everywhere. That was an obvious clip. Obvious mother, clip wait a minute, wait a minute. Doesn't your mother come down and pick up your room once no, a week? No, never. Oh, okay. I ask her <laughs> repeatedly, Mark. It's just a mess. <laughs> All right, so a clip there or a block in the back, depending on the call. Great team defense that time. Jamie Steffensmeyer, the backside defensive end on that play. Bethel reaches into their bag of tricks, run, looks like they're running to the left, flips the ball back to the wide receiver coming the other way, but Steffensmeyer held his ground. That forces a clip. The only way the Bethel blocker was able to block Steffensmeyer was in the black. Three officials saw it through their flags, 6,000 people in the stands, <laughs> and another 6,000 standing around saw it as well. And Bethel has one of their few penalties here today. Yeah, Bethel really has played a very clean game. Uh-huh. Penalty-wise. Thank you. Johnny's two for 19, Bethel with that uh, penalty, marching him back 10 yards, Kirk off the throw, and he's gonna be hit and dropped, DeMoncho the diesel, sacks him again, that's number two on this drive, and his fourth and a half of the year. What a quick defensive lineman Damian is. Who he coached him? <laughs> Brian did. <laughs> Come on, be Come proud. on guys, I'm blushing now. <laughs> now Damian, Damian's done it himself, and the big thing about Damian now is he's healthy, and uh, that allows him that quick burst off the line of scrimmage, gets into the backfield, Sacks Kirkhoff, the Bethel trying to run vertical routes there where Kirkhoff needs a long time to get those, allow those receivers to get deep. Damian doesn't allow it, sacks him in the backfield, third and very long here for Bethel. And that loss of four there brings up third and 24, the ball on the Bethel 39 yard line and Johnny coaching staff even getting into it, calling on the crowd. <laughs> the yes, sheriff, Jeff, Jeff Brotherton. Brotherton, the sheriff. <laughs> yep, the sheriff getting involved, trying to get the crowd to make some noise. Johnny fans, the Johnny Nation getting on their feet. And a timeout taken by the Royals. We'll take one, two. Third and 24 from the 39 when we come back on the Johnny Football Network. St. John's leading 19-14, but a key third down play coming up. And for the first time in a long time, I don't see the Bethel faithful waving their keys. They used to do that on every key play, and this is one of those. Third and 24, the ball at the Bethel 39-yard line. Kirkhoff sends Kildy in motion from right to left. He'll hand it off. They're going to run the football. Porter gets hit hard in the hole, and he's spun down. Right at the line of scrimmage, coming up to fill the hole. That time, Cam McCambridge. Johnny's weren't fooled at all. No, and not a bad play call by Bethel. Third and 24. You don't want to give up a big play here. Run the football. Allow your punt team to come out. And then your Bethel defense eventually is going to have to stop St. John's if they're going to win. So give them a chance to do so with a little longer field. Blake Elliott back to receive the punt, standing at his own 25-yard line. 
The punt up coming from one Ryan Davis who punted once for 37 yards in the first half. He's standing at his own 26. Good snap back to him. Johnny's with a rush on. Gets this one away. It hangs up. Elliott takes the ball to 32 and it's going to get hit and dropped right there. In fact, run out of bounds <laughs> by the linebacker and special teams player Kirby Carr. Johnny fans, Johnny football brought to you by the Engel Law Firm. Attorneys Greg Engel and Tom Kramer, both St. John's alumni whose practice includes the areas of family law, real estate, and mediation services. If you need law help, call the Engel Law Firm at 320-253-3700. First and 10 for the Johnnies on offense, their first possession of the second half. They started on their own 32 with two wide receivers right, one to the left. That's Splinter. Split back to the backfield. And Keating with 13 on the play clock is going to change the play up totally. Keating under center. Seven step drop, looking right now, throwing left. Leonard with a catch to the 35 yard line. Turns inside and is going to be dropped right there at the 35, a gain of three. And Brian, you thought maybe he should have turned to the outside where he could have gotten away from the would be tackler. And that would be Ben Wasik back up free safety. Well, as always, hindsight's 20 20. Isaac Flinner doing the best he can out there, but he caught the ball. And then if he would have turned to the outside, he would have had a little more room. But he doesn't know that. He's on the field where. It's a lot easier up here in the booth to see yeah. where the open space is. Second down at seven, the ball at the Johnny 36, right to left on your radio dial. Lacey showing blitz, and here he comes as Keating rolls to his right, throws right, pass caught by Elliott up over the 40, dives, and it looks like he's got the first down. Oh. Maybe not. They're going to spot him back at the 40-yard line for a gain of four. He's going to be two yards short. Blake's 10th catch of the game. St. John's continuing to get the ball to Elliott. That's where you're going to make hay. Give the ball to your best player. They've always said the old cliche, big time players make big time plays and big time games. Blake already has two touchdowns, now at 117 yards in the afternoon. He's your go-to guy, give him the ball, and if you win with him, you win with him, and if you don't, you went down to blazing. Elliott comes out in the slot left side. Quintzman split wide left. <laughs> Regalman split right. Split back to the backfield. Keating again, looks over the defense. Gonna change the play with seven on the play clock. Third down at two for the Johnnies. The ball in their own 40. Keating may run the option here. Nope, five-step drop. Going to look and throw short. Pass caught by Good. First down, 45, up to the 47-yard line. A gain on the play of seven yards and a first down for the Johnnies. Very nice check down by Ryan Keating. He had the deep out pattern that's worked so well in the first half called. Checked off to his running back, just throwing that dump circle pass over the middle, getting the first down. Again, I talk about it every week, but Ryan Keating is a veteran quarterback, and in big-time games, he can check off to his second, third, and fourth receivers. You just don't get that with an inexperienced guy. First and 10 now, the ball, the Johnny 48. As they move right to left down the field in the red jerseys, white pants. Royals in the white jersey, gold pants, blue numbers. Keating hands it off on the option, and Nelson on the carry, shedding tacklers, getting to the Bethel 45-yard line before he was finally brought down by Peter Eastland, the strong safety who Blake Elliott beat for that touchdown at the end of the first half. But Eastland making the play there, and uh, Nelson, who could have had a really Big gain, held to a gain of uh, seven yards. If he could have broken one more tackle, he was off to the races. One more tackle, but the middle of the field opened up there on the dive option play. Nelson coming right off the left guard. Justin Cass in the hole was there. A nice block at the point of attack. Nelson picks up seven. Keating and Elliott wide right on. Second down and three from the 45 of the Royals. Keating running the sprint option right side. Quick pitch here, Nelson, 40. Nelson on his feet at the 35 and down to the 34-yard line. Excellent block of the outside. Give Diley some credit there along with uh, Apollo's product, Nelson. Good also out there. And uh, Nelson doing a nice job carrying the ball for 10 yards and a first down for the Johnnies. I'm going to say something that's so obvious, but it's a lot easier to play with the lead. And St. John's looks like a different team here. They've scored on their last two possessions of the first half. Now this is the opening series that they've had the football in the second half, and they look like a confident group. The running game's going. Keating's making great decisions in the passing game, and we have it first and 10 on the Bethel 35. John Nelson got banged up on that last carry. Jake Tyson for him now. First and 10 for the Bethel 35. Bubble screen, pass out in the flat. Elliott the catch at the 35, 30. Elliott hurdles it would be tackler and down to the 25 yard line before he was brought down. Peter Eastland doing the honors. Uh, also give credit on the play that time to the linebacker, Matt Wasink. But another first down for the Johnnies, or so it looks, depending on the spot. Blake Elliott with his 11th catch of the day making his claim that not only is he the best player in the MIAC, but possibly the country. It's going to be short, nine yards of the reception, setting up second and one. And with the success St. John's has had in the running game, the success they've had throwing the out, now Bethel's defense has to adjust that 
creates diversity in your offense, and St. John's taking advantage of that time with the bubble screen. Second down and one, the ball at the Bethel 26. Keating at the eye, fakes it to Tice, looking to pass. Now we'll roll right, they throw a flag, might be some holding in the interior line. Keating's got the 20 and out of bounds at about the 18 yard line. A flag though dropped right in the middle of the offensive line and the Bethel coach is next to us crying for a hold and I think they got their wish. They did Mark, because the flag came from the referee, the backside, calling a hold. The offensive line has done an absolutely marvelous job creating time for Ryan Keating to be back in the pocket and that time Bethel, uh, the offensive line does get called for a holding penalty. That'll back St. John's up, bring up a second down and 10 situation. But Keating, a, another good job of not forcing that ball downfield. He didn't, didn't have receivers that he saw open, so he took the ball upfield for first down yardage play nullified by the hold. So it'll put the ball back at the Bethel 35-yard line. Elliott, Tice, and Klinsman wide right. One back of the backfield is Jason Good, the transfer from North Dakota State. Regelman split left just off the line. Now good in motion out the left side and empty backfield on. Second and 10 for the 36. Keating under some pressure. Steps out of the pocket. Wants to run. He's got the 35-yard line. Getting close to going out of bounds and does so at about the 31-yard line. Got back some of that penalty yardage, Tom, and a good play by Keating. Didn't see anything open up, and he got pressured. Well, you have to elude the first pass rusher, and then you have a case where there's a broken play. Sometimes receivers come open late. There, Ryan Keating not making the big mistake like he has all game. He's been very steady, very poised. Take those five yards and now give yourself a shot on third down. Third down and six, the ball at the 31. We've got a station identification break coming up in just a moment. Back to the eye formation. Nelson behind good with Klinsman split left. Elliott split wide right. Keating back to pass on third down. He's got time, throws it short. The ball batted in the air. Nelson to catch the 30. And he's going to go down at the 31-yard line, right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, bringing up fourth down. And we'll take a quick break for station identification on the Johnny Football Network. It's now fourth down and six. It's fourth so down territory. <laughs> Maybe a running play would have been better, but Johnny's elected to pass, and uh, now we'll go for it on fourth down and six. Keating under center. Johnny's first attempt on fourth down today. Keating back to pass, throws it, sidearm. Elliott, and he dropped the ball. He had it dropped it at the 25 yard line and hit him right in the hands and he again took his eye off the ball trying to run before he had possession of the football he really had a lot of green space as he came toward the St. John's sideline but he didn't secure the ball the ball for the second time today fell through his fell through his jersey into the ground Ryan Keating throwing that ball a little sidearm that time a little Rich Gannon in him puts the ball right on the money Bethel averts a big play and they have it now first and ten on the same on their own 30 yard line two wide receivers left eye formation for the deep back they fake it to him Kirkhoff's going to throw into the flat catch by Evans up to the 35 36 37 yard line before he was brought down and coming up that time to make the play for the Johnnies was Paul Gans got some help from Cole Dybel gain of seven will set up second down and short play action pass that time run by Bethel as they run the ball consistently on first down that time they fake the run to the left or fake the run to the right, bootleg out to the left. Kirkhoff dumps the ball to the fullback for good yardage. High formation again. Evans the fullback, Porter the deep back, wide receivers each side. Toss weep right side, Porter on the carry. McCambridge tries to bring him down and trips him up in the backfield. And there's Dybel there to clean him up and give a lot of credit to Cam McCambridge trying to make the play from the backside. It'll be a gain of one or two to the 39-yard line. And set up third down at about two. And fans can look and say, well, Cameron McCambridge did not make that play. He just missed him. But in fact, he did because he strung out the running back to run sideways. Anytime running back's running sideways, all your friends in the red jerseys can come up and make a play. The key to that play really was Cameron making the wide, or excuse me, the running back run parallel to the line of scrimmage, allowing his boys to clean up. And possibly taking back the cutback lane. Third down, a short two, and Kirkhoff in the shotgun. With three wide receivers left, two to the right, might call his own number on a draw here. Gets the snap, and he does. He's going to run it up the middle. He's got the first down, 45, and hit by Goltz and driven back to the 44-yard line. I think that was pretty obvious that possibly the draw was coming. Kirkhoff likes to call his own number near the goal line. There he did there and picked up about seven yards and a first down. Well, Bethel went no backs, and when you spread out like that, the way Steve Johnson has coached this game, if you're the defense, you better spread out too because he hasn't been afraid to take the big risk that time the Johnny defense spreads out. Bethel does call the quarterback draw. They had third and short. They've had a lot of third and short situations here today. The quarterback draw is successful, though. Jeremy uh, Good, uh, Jeremy Goltz coming off the free safety position put a nice lick on Kirkhoff. 
First and 10 for the Royals on their own 46-yard line. One back of the backfield with Kirkhoff is in the shotgun. Two wide receivers left, one to the right. Kirkhoff back to pass, throwing over the middle. He's got a man, Ludvigsen, open, and he's out of bounds at about the 35-yard line of the Johnnies. Big play there. A 19-yard gain, another first down for the Royals. They're 16th in this game, according to our St. John Preparatory School stat sheet. They had a good touch pass there by Kirkhoff, getting the ball over the underneath coverage to the out pattern. And the Johnny secondary has been burnt beat, uh, deep twice today. So giving a little bit of cushion there, allowing that uh, deep out to be open. Kirkhoff, a nice touch on that ball. And Bethel has it deep in St. John's territory. Well, not so deep, 36 yard line, first and 10. 4.08 left to go here in the third quarter. St. John's on top, 19 to 14. Kirkhoff again to the shotgun with Porter to his right. One wide receiver right is Croyle, two to the left. Handoff on the draw, Porter on the carry, over left tackle. He's got good running room inside the 35 down to the 31-yard line. And that time picking him up on the play defensively was Goltz once again. We called his name a number of times. Also Cole Dye will coming up to stuff the run. But a gain of close to five, maybe six yards on the play for Porta, who now has 21 carries, 72 yards. Top receiver for Bethel, Ludvigsen, who just had his last catch be his third of the game for 64 yards. Yeah, and Bethel is doing a great job, like St. John's on the series before, of getting five, six yards on first down, which really creates stress on the defense. One back of the backfield, Porta, Kirkhoff rolling to his right, got time, hit as he throws, and the pass is tipped, tipped again, and incomplete. But the lone back, third down and five for the Johnny 30. He'll get the call, running right up the middle. It's going to be short of a first down, but a gain of close to four yards. And depending on where they do spot the footballs, he didn't have to get to the 25, just the 26. Might have enough for a first down. The interior of the line slowing him down. Well, there's that four, four down territory where Bethel knows they're going to go for it on fourth down, so they run the football on third down and get good yardage doing it. They got a good push right at the point of attack. They're running off right guard. That dive just hits very quickly, and Porter, the running back, hits in there hard. So he gets that pile moving forward, and you're right, Mark, with the spot of the football, they may have picked up the first down. I'm going to predict just short. The shadows creeping over Clemens Stadium's turf. 3.18 left to go in the third, and it is, as you said, just short for the Royals. It'll bring up fourth down and one. The ball spotted right at the Johnny 26-yard line. The Royals today, two of three on fourth down. That lone miss was a big one. It was right before the half, and the Johnnies turned that into a scoring drive. Wide left, John Croyle. Split right, Ludvigsen. I formation. Evans, the fullback, Porter, the deep back. Eight men in the box for the Chinese. Kirkhoff calls his own number and muscles ahead down to the 25 yard line for the first down. Tom? Yeah, nice play there. Brian Kirkhoff, or not Brian Scott Kirkhoff, that's his brother. I lived with Brian Kirkhoff in college. That's why it's, uh, it's tough to <laughs> decide that it's Scott Kirkhoff. Nice play call there. You only need a foot. You got to trust your offensive line there. Just gets the push. First down. So first and 10 for the Johnny 25-yard line. St. John's holding a 19-14 lead over the Royals with 3.07 left to go. Evans will be the fullback of the I formation. Port of the deep back, two wide receivers to the left. Kirkhoff with his tight end to the right side, Scrabeck, and they'll hand it off to Porter, running around the right end. Big hole, 20-yard line to the 15. Porter lost his footing and slips down at about the 13-yard line. Credit the tackle to either Stephens Meyer or Zahar, but another first down for the Royals on the gain of roughly 11 yards. Counter trade play that, that time run by Bethel, where the back takes a counter step that time to his left. That allows a pulling guard and tackle to get out in front. Bethel had numbers on St. John's that time. Johnny's lucky that Porta slipped on his cut at the about the 14-yard line. Otherwise, he may have gone for a touchdown. Coyle and Ludvigsen split left, eye formation again, Porta the deep back. First and 10 for the 14-yard line. Toss sweep, right side, Porter getting the call, and why not meets him and drops him for no gain. Cam McCambridge also in there. Zahar coming up on the play along with Steffensmeyer. Boy, there's an experienced play by Ryan Why not? He gets into the backfield, and then instead of coming back toward the backfield, he flattens out, so gets to the point of destruction where Porter's going to turn it upfield, stops him for no gain. And that's where St. John's benefits by having smaller, quick defensive linemen. Ryan Why not ran down a running back. Not a lot of teams do that. They want to have these huge defensive linemen making a pile. St. John's choosing to have quick guys and paid benefits for them there. Kildy split left. Meanwhile, Jeff Lane to the right side, near side of the field, eye formation, handoff to Evans, the fullback, the dive down to the 10-yard line off left guard. 
And give credit on the tackle that time to Why Not again. And also Gans coming up along with Hood to fill the hole. That'll bring up now third down. And about seven yards, the ball spotted at the 10 yard line. Two down territory, no doubt for the Royals as they look. Three wouldn't really help them. Would pull them closer as they trail 19 to 14, but. It's a lot of game left. Yeah, eventually yeah. it might help them though, Mark. So we'll see the kicker. The last two extra points has looked good. The first field goal, Bethel had a bad snap and the field goal was no good. Ludvigson split left. Split right this time is Croyle. Kirkhoff's gonna toss it to Porter and he's gonna be around left end and walk into the end zone. Johnny defense was nowhere to be found on the toss sweep. And it's a 10 yard touchdown run for the running back, Phil Porta, on his 25th carry of the day, his first score. And we've seen St. John's run that very play. It's a counter option, fake the dive to the right, and then get the tackle out in front of the, of the pitch man. Kirkhoff fakes the dive to the right, reverses field, pitches the ball on a quick option pitch. The blocker is out there, but he has nobody to block because there's no St. John's defender there. Porta gets into the end zone almost untouched. Bethel pulls back in front here, 20 to 19, and likely a situation here where they're going to go for two. Well, indeed they are. Kirkhoff staying on the field. And so the Royals will try for two. The Johnnies missed on an attempt for two in the first half. Substitution problems here for the Royals as they try to get the necessary personnel into the huddle. Boy, and the play clock has not yet started to run. Now it has 20 seconds left, so they had plenty of time to get their personnel onto the field. John Croyle split left, three wide receivers to the right, including Ludvigson. And Kirkhoff throws, quick pass, incomplete. Tried to get it to Kildy and could not, so the drive for two no good, and we'll take a break. Royals back in the lead, 20 to 19 on the Johnny Football Network. Johnny's football continues on the Johnny Football Network. Kick high in the air, Elliott under it at the seven. He's got one kickoff return for a TD to the 15 to the 20 yard line. Try to get to the outside, cannot. And is tackled at the 22 yard line. The special teams play made that time by Brian Hibbs, a backup cornerback out of Colby, Wisconsin. Minute five left to go in the third. And the Johnnies have driven the football into Bethel territory. No points to show for it here in the second half, so they can move the football. They trail here 20 to 19, Tom. They just need to be patient. They do need to be patient, and even if they don't score on this drive, they have to get the field position back. Going into the fourth quarter, you want to have that advantage. Keating with split backs to the backfield, sends two wide receivers left, one to the right. Back to pass is Ryan. Looking left, throwing left. Clints with the catch up over the 30 yard line. Turned inside. Sam Lacey there to meet him and slings him back close to the 31. Gain of eight on the play as we're into the final minute of the third quarter with the Johnnies trailing 20 to 19. Clock stopped here as Lee Klintzman is slow to get up on the near sideline. He is up and off the field. Isaac Flenner replacing him in the Johnny's lineup. Here, second down at two from the 31 for the Johnny's. And the Johnny's will hand it off and falling forward as Nelson might have it up for a first down. 30 seconds and counting now. Third down is spotted by the linesman as he comes in, so Nelson was marked short of the first down. It'll be third and one here, 21 seconds remaining in the quarter. Keating taking his time in the huddle. Again, with a long drive by Bethel that uh, St. John's only had the ball one series. How come the play clock's not running? Quarter. They've been having either a some problems with it or, or something. Split back to the backfield. Final play of the third quarter here. Keating on th third and one for the 32. Taking his time. In fact, they blow the quarter dead. So we'll take a break. Come back after this. Johnny's will be on the other end of the field. Trailing 20 to 19 on the Johnny Football Network. Good. And Nelson line up in the backfield with Elliott split right. Flenner in the slot. And Keating will run the option, turn it upfield, and he slides down at the 35-yard line, a la Tom Linneman. He's got the first down <laughs> and a gain of three. <laughs> I slid one time in my career. I'm kidding. <laughs> Mark must remember it. Good play that <laughs> one time. One time. <laughs> Good play that time run by St. John's. Fake the dive. Bethel has to respect it because it's third and short. Ryan Keating goes down the line to the left. Bethel takes the pitch man away from him. He plants that left foot, gets upfield, slides down safely. Johnny's have it first and 10 on their own 34-yard line. St. John sends two wide receivers to the right, Elliott and Klintzman. Flutter split left. Back to pass is Keating. Back rolling to his right, throwing right. Catch by Elliott up at the 38, 40, 45-yard line. 
out of bounds at about the 47, pushed out by the cornerback, Jeremy Sather. Got some help from the uh, linebacker on that play, Josh Holm. And another linebacker, Gary Foshing, hit on that play as well as Blake Elliott gets pushed right into our defensive assistant coach. And My money's on Gary Foshing there. <laughs> yeah, no Blake's doubt. tough, but. He's got to know when it's coming, though, and he kind of got Gary will smoke you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gary's huge. <laughs> 20 to 19, the score. St. John's trailing, but on the move, picking up a first down, move the ball out to their own 46. Two wide receivers left, one to the right. Gary could play today. Keating, back to pass. He's got plenty of time, throwing over the middle. Pass caught by Regalman inside the Bethel 40, down to the 39-yard line. Josh Holm on the tackle again for the Royals, but another first down for the Johnnies. Means so much to have Jed Regalman back in this lineup. We had a couple games without him. He really controls the middle of the field, which takes a lot of pressure off the receivers on the outside. You have to keep a safety in because Jed Regalman is just like a receiver. He's a tall kid, and he goes up and gets the ball. That pass play, 15 yards covered. Regalman coming up with the reception, and that is his third on the day for 49 yards. He's out of the game now as Fletter's in. Keating rolling to his left on first and 10 for the 39. Got some time. Throws toward the sideline. Clips with the catch of the 30. Turns inside. 25. Nope. Held up at about the 26, 27 yard line. He got hit pretty hard as he came back in and waiting for him was the backup nose tackle, Chris Johnson out of Maple Grove. 6'2, 255 at a junior and Sam Lacey. Having another good game for the Royals. Bringing a hit as well. But a first down for the Johnnies on the gain. And we'll call it 11 yards. Tremendous job blocking the sprint out series today for St. John's. Ryan Keating gets out on the edge, and there's no Bethel defender forcing him that tells you the offensive line and the fullback are doing a great job blocking. First and 10 for the 28. The blitz is on for the Royals. Keating with plenty of time. Now slings it out right side. Elliott the catch. And he's down to about the 22-yard line, a gain of six. Sather, again, the defender on the play for the Royals. Able to touch him down home also out there. It's a remarkable diving catch. Blake Elliott there running a fade pattern coming back after seeing Ryan scramble. So it'll be now second down and five after the gain of five to the 22. Klitzman split left. Johnny's on the move, trailing 20 to 19 with 13.45 to play in the fourth. Two wide receivers left. Leonard to the right, split back to the backfield. Keating, option pitch here to Nelson. They suckered in the... Uh, linebacker and Nelson gets it down to the 16 the 14 yard line great play by Keating yeah if Nelson makes a cut there he bangs his head on the goal post very nice conceived play for St. John's it'll be a first down after the gain of roughly eight well, one thing you worry about there is that linebacker seeing the ball and either knocking it away or picking off the pitch on the pitch yeah because it's a deep pitch back but uh, the Johnnies fake the ball to good up upfield, and then Nelson gets out on the perimeter. Really, Justin Cass got out there. He would have been blocking for Nelson on the outside, but Josh cut it inside. The Johnnies have it first and 10. 22nd first down for the Johnnies. Keating rolling to his left on first and 10 for the 14 of the Royals. Looking left, throwing, and the pass incomplete. Elliott hit just as he was to receive the football. Steve Dar, the cornerback, with the big hit there as the ball goes off the hands of Blake Elliott. Second down at 10 for the 14 upcoming. And again, the sprint out series to the left. There's just nobody there to disrupt Ryan Keating as he's sprinting out and really possibly could have run the football uh, for good yardage on that play. But Blake Elliott was open on the sideline. The ball thrown as his right shoulder was facing the sideline. The ball hit thrown toward his left shoulder, and Blake was unable to come up with the football. Nelson, Klinsman, and Elliott split left. Good, the lone back of the backfield. Keating back to pass on second and 10 for the 14. Pressure's up the middle. Keating rolling to his left. Throws back across field. Right side, it's knocked away. Almost intercepted. Keating just didn't have the arm strength there as Sather came over and knocked the ball away. Good wide open in the corner of the end zone, the near corner, the front corner, and instead it'll be third and 10. That ball just hung up a little bit, looked a little bit like a grenade, and it just never came down. Jason Good, you could see him wide open waiting for the ball to get there. But St. John's very lucky because that's the type of play that can go 95 yards for six. Yeah, that was the, the worry there as the ball was broken on by Jeremy Sather, the cornerback out of Wilmer. Klinsman split left, Regalman to the slot on the left side on third down to 10. The Johnnies on third down today are six of eight, 75%. Keating, straight drop, under some pressure, rolling to his right, and he's going to get hit as he throws, throws it, pass caught by Nelson inside the 10 down to the 70-yard line. Got half the yardage for a score about uh, three yards short of a first down though and the Johnnies aren't going to chance it they want Keller out there to give them the lead with 12.50 to play in the game Johnnies trailing 20 to 19 and Keller will attempt the field goal from the 15 yard line a 25 yard kick and uh, 
Brandon Keller, perfect last week, two of two, five of six on the season. But I tell you what, Lacey's come off the corner on the, on the Johnny when they've kicked today, gotten awful close to the ball on one occasion, blocked it the other. Good snap to Zahar. The kick is up by Keller. It is good. And the yeah. Johnnies lead 22 to 20. 12 25 left to go. Back in a minute on the Johnny Football Network. Again, the backup fullback for the Royals picking up the football and Justin Uran moving it out over the 40 to the 41 yard line. Oh, we have a moment. I want to tell you that the scoring drive, 12 plays, 69 yards, 3 minutes, 45 seconds, and of course the 25 yard field goal by Brandon Keller. Concordia leading St. Thomas 28 20 with 2 minutes to play in the third quarter on our Plaza Park Bank scoreboard. St. Olaf leading by that same score 28 20 at Gustavus with a minute to play in the third, and Carlton. Dusting McAllister, 39-13, 9.54 to play in that game. Break up the Knights. Yep, indeed. Here, it's the Royals trailing 22-20. Kirkhoff back to pass, lobs the play, out of bounds. Nice catch by one of the Johnny backups on the sideline. <laughs> he tried to get it to Croyle, the wide receiver on that side, but saw double coverage and wisely threw it out of bounds. He did short set that time by Kirkhoff, and Hood was in quickly again, forcing that hurry. The ball thrown high and outside. Bethel having lots of success running on first down. A few series they've tried to throw on first down. They haven't been successful. 12-15 to go in the fourth quarter. St. John's leading 22 to 20. Second to 10, the ball on the Bethel 40. They send two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. That's Croyle. Hand off up the middle. And a gain of two, maybe three yards on the play to the 43-yard line. Play of the game Porta, coming again, up the right ball here, carrier. Mark. Yeah. And Tom, because uh, Bethel, <laughs> so. if the... Uh, if the Johnnies can hold here on third down, get their hands on the football, get their offense back on the field, there's under 12 minutes left in the game. The Johnnies are leading 22-20. It's a big, big play. And you never know if Johnson's going to go for it here on fourth down if they don't make it. In the first half, you remember a fourth and two, very controversial decision. 7 of 14 of the Royals on third down. Here it's third down at seven. The ball at the 43 of Bethel. Bubble screen, right side. Kildy the catch at the 40-yard line. 45 dives. He's got the first down. Perfect play call by the Royals. They've got the first down at midfield against the Johnny D. Excellent blocking out there by Bethel, the wide receivers. And Kilty a great job accelerating right at the right moment. The Johnny pursuit was starting to get there. He accelerated, got himself first down yardage just inside midfield. Bethel keeps their drive alive. The 20th first down of the game. Kildy coming up with that catch, his second now for 25 yards. First one went for a touchdown. Paul First Gans and 10, the ball right at the Johnny 49. Paul Gans was a victim of that chop block there on the outside. He had it played defended well, but a good block by the Bethel. Croyle comes split left, and they hand it off to the fullback, and Evans carries down to the Johnny 45-yard line, where DeMonso, as well as McCambridge, combined on the tackle. Elsewhere on the Plaza Park Bank scoreboard, St. Cloud State playing their final game at Selkie Field, leading 27-17 halfway through the third quarter. Number 19, Vanderbilt beating, uh, excuse me, number 19, Florida beating Vanderbilt 28-17. Number 19, Purdue on top of 10th-ranked Iowa, 7-zip with uh, about 10.58 to play in the second quarter. 11 minutes left here in the fourth. Johnny's up by two, 22-20. Bethel on the move. Toss sweep right side. Porter on the carry, 45-40, 35, down to the 34-yard line before he is brought down. It looks like he's running downhill every play. Goltz and Gans on the stop after the gain of 11. Porter's a kid who got a lot of interest from Division I and Division II colleges last year. I saw him once play for Cambridge Isanti, and he had over 200 yards in the game. Also, he's very quick. He runs low to the ground and keeps his pads centered. He's very quick, and on that play, he just scooted right through the hole. Porta with 26 carries, 100 yards so far today. And he's the lone back of the backfield here, two wide receivers each side, and they'll give it to him, and they blew the play dead. Actually, Mullen, no, it is Porta, number 25 instead of 28. Even when Porta walks, he's kind of has that forward lean to his body as he's going forward. But that time, Bethel, a rare penalty here today. They, they have an illegal procedure called against them, the right side of their line. The tackle moved over there. The official spotted it. So did the fans in a five-yard walk-off against Bethel. Third penalty for 25 yards for the Royals, according to our St. John's Preparatory School stat sheet. And also another interesting stat, right now, Bethel 
29 minutes of possession time to the Johnnies, 18 and a half. And that could be a big stat. That's maybe why the Johnnies are giving a little here on defense. First and 15 for the Johnny 39-yard line. Two wide receivers to each side, and Kirkhoff going to call timeout. We'll take one as well. Johnny's up 22 to 20 on the Johnny Football Network. St. John's on top, 22 to 20. 10-22 left to go in the fourth quarter in Collegeville. John Gallardi going for career win number 409, which would break the record he currently shares. With Eddie Robinson, the great grambling coach. Two wide receivers left, one to the right, one back in the backfield. Porta for Kirkhoff on first and 15 from the 39. He's going to hand it off on a draw. Porta with a carry inside the 35, out of the 30. And a nice game there of nine yards, setting up second down and six for the Royals. And that's a play we had not seen yet today, and they ran it well to the Royals. Bethel did. A shotgun snap to Kirkhoff. He starts off like he's going to sprint to the left and then hands the ball back to Porter, the single back in the backfield. A good game, sec bringing up second and five for Bethel on the Johnny 30-yard line. 9.55 and counting. Johnny's holding that two-point lead, 22 to 20. One wide receiver to the right is Croyle. Two wide receivers, Kildy and Lane split left. Hand off again, Porta up the middle. And he's got two, three yards before Dumanso pushes him back along with Whitehut. So it'll be third down and two. Boy, when your running game is turning out the yardage like the Royals are, and right now they have 168 yards on the ground, you can uh, really set your pass up as well. That's something the Johnnies here with it being third down and three. To about the Johnny 26 yard line you're gonna have to watch out for. Absolutely, four down territory now for Bethel. They're really too, out of field goal range. It's, it's a little bit too far, but there would be no reason to punt, obviously, in this situation. So, Oh, no, they're not. Their kickers hit a 51-yarder. I formation, wide receivers each side. And Kirkhoff hands it off of the big back. Evans charges ahead, and they're going to hold him up just short of a first down. Matt Darling doing the honors, along with Steffensmeyer collapsing on the play. It's going to be fourth down, a key play upcoming here. and uh, Decision time. I would think Scott Kirkhoff will get the call on fourth down at about a half yard. The ball spotted just inside the 25. It is fourth and one with 8.40 to go. They call, can't call a timeout to think about it since they already used two of them. Have just one timeout left now for the Royals. And a great call that time by Jerry Haugen on the defense. Matt Darling, the left defensive tackle, coming on a slant down, gets himself in position to make the hit right at the line of scrimmage. Fourth down and one, eye formation. Porta dots the eye behind Evans. Two wide receivers to the left. Ball spotted at the 25. The give to Evans, the fullback. He's got the first down over right tackle. Down to about the 23-yard line. They run behind that big right side. Holgrimson, 265. Tim Lawrence, 287. Both are seniors. And they get enough edge to give the Royals a first down. They're 22nd of the game, keeping the drive alive. You have to be impressed by both offensive lines in this ball game. The St. John's offensive line has given Ryan Keating really a lot of time to throw the football. Conversely, Bethel has done a wonderful job run blocking and giving themselves manageable situations here, picking up a lot of third and shorts, fourth and shorts, and Bethel has it first and 10 on the St. John's 23-yard line. Eight minutes to go. I formation. Might have been a jump there. Here comes the option. Porta on the left side, getting to the 20-yard line. Steffensmeyer stringing it out, and McCambridge there to clean it up as it got to the 16. How is Steffensmeyer not being held by the offensive tackle, Dave Thomas? As he tries to get away. Well, he is. It looked like he was being held, but there was no flag thrown. It's been a Second straight game where the officials have rather than make calls that are obvious have put their hands in their pockets. And I, you know, it was pointed out yesterday or last week after the game, there was not a holding call in the whole St. Thomas, St. John's game. You can't tell me there wasn't at least holding on one play. That was a nice play, though, by Steffensmeyer to play off that block and turn Porta back into the inside where the pursuit could get him. Second down at five for the 18. Hand off. Muhlenberg on the carry this time, and he is hit and dropped at about the 16-yard line after a gain of two. Gans and McCambridge coming up to make the stop that time. And so it'll be another third down situation. The Royals are 8 of 16 on third down, 4 of 5 on fourth down. Definitely time to hold your breath here. Seven minutes, under seven minutes now and counting in the game. The Johnnies lead 22 20 here, but Bethel knocking on the door on the St. John's 16-yard line. Another third and short, third and two here coming up for Bethel. Massive substitutions by the Royal Specialty players. 
Brent Einerson coming into the ball game. He's out of Alexandria and a 6'3", 193-pound wide receiver. He split left. Kirkhoff, toss sweep. Muhlenberg on a carry, trying to get to the outside. Does so, gets tripped up as he gets to the 10-yard line. He's got the first down, though, on the gain of make it uh, five yards down to about the 11. Got a hand on his foot, and that tripped him up. Jeremy Gold's coming up hobbling a little bit after the tackle, but a first down, first and 10 at the Johnny 11. Great what an impressive running attack, though, by Bethel. You talk about St. John's being able to usually stop the run pretty darn well, but this Bethel squad can run the ball. They do a very nice job on their sweeps and their pitches. Very impressive running game. I formation. Muhlenberg down in the eye behind the big fullback Evans. Two wide receivers left pitch. Muhlenberg on the carry to the nine. Moves it about two yards with six minutes to go and counting. Not a lot of time left should the Royals score for the Johnnies who lead 22 to 20. One of these long possessing the football drives. Bethel is on. The Johnnies just cannot get them stopped. And they really need to force a turnover here because Bethel now certainly is in field goal range. It'll be second down. And eight, the ball at the Johnny nine with two wide receivers. Jeff Lane and Ludvigson split left. Kirkhoff hands it off to the fullback. Evans down to the five to the four. Running right up the middle. And this Johnny defense obviously tired. They've been on the field over 30 minutes, over more than half of this ball game. And it's starting to show a little bit. A gain of four on the play will set up now. Third down and roughly four from the four. Jeremy Hood that time, the right side of the St. John's defense as Bethel runs left, he's slanting in. The play's hitting off tackle. Jeremy Hood has to close that tackle hole, and he does, but the running back had enough momentum to fall forward. Royals can get a first down inside the one. I formation, Muhlenberg dots the I. Kirkhoff rolling out, he's got time. Now he's gonna run for it, he dives, he's into the end zone, touchdown Royals. Kirkhoff seeing that the passing lane was not there, called his own number, got hit as he crossed the goal line, and he is on the turf, shaken up. But he scores a quick six for the Royals with 4.57 to go, and they lead it 26-22. Kirkhoff banged up. We'll take a timeout. Back in a minute on the Johnny Football Network. The line lines up to the left side of the field along with the backup tight end and uh, Parnell in the shotgun, and they'll snap it to him, and he's rolling to his right, throws into the end zone, the pass, batted away by Zahar, intercepted by Goltz. The try for two, no good, and we'll take a break. When we come back in a minute, the Johnny's trail 26-22 on the Johnny Football Network. 4.57 left to play. St. John's trailing 26-22 to the Bethel Royals. And the kickoff upcoming by Shutter. And back deep to receive is Elliott at the 10. Elliott to the 15. Elliott to the 20 yard line, makes a man miss, 25, 30. Elliott, 35, 40. Elliott to the 50. Elliott cuts back inside, 45, and down to the Bethel 40 yard line. Bottle Lightning makes the play. Bottle Lightning does make a play, and really, the kicker, Tedder, he made a play to prevent a touchdown that time, taking the sideline away and allowing the pursuit to close in on Blake. But excellent blocking by the St. John special teams. Blake Elliott makes the rest happen. The Johnnies are in business. They need to be, too. 4.47 left here. They're trailing 26-22, and they have it first and 10 on the Bethel 40-yard now line. Now, this might be too much time left. St. John's, I can't remember when they had a five-minute drive. Now, with this big kickoff return, you don't want to put that defense back on the field. Don't want to score too soon early. I know you can't say, well, we don't want to score too soon, but take some time off the clock when you score. Handoff for Nelson running a dive up the middle gets down to the 37 yard line and what you say Tom of the first half you win with your big play players and Johnny's got it in and I think stupidly I, I hate to say that but stupidly you don't kick the ball away to Blake Elliott like that when you just took the lead you squib it well they've been successful both squibbing it and kicking it deep that time they chose to kick it deep and right it backfires on him second and seven of the ball at the Bethel 37 yard line two wide receivers left one to the right Keating rolling to his left has got plenty of time and protection. Now he's going to run for it. 35-30 slides down at the 28 like Ryan Keating is known to do. <laughs> that play has been there, though, all day. The Johnnies yep. have done an excellent job of running the sprint out series to the left. Keating that time, no receivers open. The whole field is open. He just keeps running downhill for first down yardage and then slides down first and 10 St. John's. At the 29-yard line of the Royals with 4-12 to go, and the clock stopped after that first down. Now Keating with 21 on the play clock can afford to run some time. 
Three wide receivers right, one back of the backfield, good. Keating back to pass, he's got time, airing it out long for Nelson, and he can't make the catch, and it's almost intercepted. They were throwing the post that time, and the defensive back coming over, Jeremy Sather almost had the pick. Sather coming from the backside, and as that ball hung up in the air, it was coming to Nelson, but Sather coming from the backside as the ball kind of got deflected toward the ground, almost made a great interception. The Johnnies take a shot at the end zone. Bethel makes the play to defend it. Second and 10 here for the Johnnies on the Bethel 29 yard line. Need to get yards on second down here. Elliott split right. Regelman stand up tight end on the right side. Klinsman to the left, split back to the backfield, good. And Nelson back to pass Keating, hearing it out right side. The pass is caught by Elliott. They're both players clutching the football at the 20 yard line, the defensive back and Elliott. Johnny's ball. And the Johnnies get the football. Oh. It, it's uh, dual possession that time. Dual possession belongs to the offense. Nine Blake. yards on the reception. Sather almost coming up with another big interception. And I think he did intercept that ball. And Blake Elliott came oh, around yeah. using his strength and put his arms around the ball. Then when they went to the turf, they had dual possession. Great individual effort by Blake Elliott time and time again. Just like kicking the ball off to him. It's Elliott roulette. Eventually, you're going to get burned. Good call by the official passion. there too, Mark. Yes. Not, not blowing that call. He took his time, saw what he saw, and made the correct call. Eight, three-yard reception makes it third and two. The ball at the Bethel 21 with three minutes, nine seconds to go. Johnny's trailing by four. Keating rolling left. He's got some time. Will throw for Elliott. Makes the catch at the 10-yard line. First down, Johnny. Oh, my God. What, what a, a play by the playmaker. It was, and it's a sideline play, so the ball's heading out of bounds, and all Blake can do is let his feet go dead on the sideline there and hope that he can stretch long enough his six-foot-two body to catch that ball on the sideline, and he did. The whole crowd, everybody wanted oh. Ryan Keating to run around that left side because he easily would have had first down yardage, but he's thinking get the ball to Blake Elliott. He does. The Johnnies have it first and goal on the 10-yard line, exactly three minutes left to play. Split back to the backfield. Keating will hand it off. Good on the carry, down to the five, to the four. Jason Good, the transfer from North Dakota State, running off right tackle for it. Five yards on the play. He tackled there, and is coming up to fill the hole from the linebacker, Wasink, as well as the defensive back, Lacey, but it'll be second down and goal from the five. The clock is running here, Mark, 237, 236. Remember, Bethel used two timeouts here in the second half. They only have one remaining. So if St. John somehow, some way can get the ball in the end zone, they're really in a good position to win this football game. Elliott, 15 catches, 153 yards. Keating now changing up the play. He's got eight on the play clock, 220 on the game clock. Crowd making a lot of noise here at Clement Stadium. Johnny's trail by four. Second to go from the five. Keating back to pass. Throwing into the end zone, incomplete. Ball tipped away, and it will be third down and goal from the five. Ryan Keating trying to come to the backside of the formation that time toward his bench and um, Jed Regelman had run kind of a curl pattern there in the end zone. Ryan Keating had in mind to go to him. That ball was snapped with exactly one second left in the play clock as Ryan was checking off at the line of scrimmage. The Johnnies get the playoff, but it's unsuccessful. Third and goal to go here from the five yard line, 209 left in this ball game. Clintsman and Elliott split left. Regelman to the right side, split back to the backfield. Keating under center. Five-step drop, back to pass, into the flat. Nelson the catch at the six, to the five, to the four, dives, touchdown, Johnnies! Josh Nelson on the swing pass, running a flare pattern out there to the left. The field opened up on that side. Ryan Keating puts the ball on the money. Nelson is able to catch it, going full speed, and then it was just a foot race to the pylon. Bethel doing their all to get there, but Josh Nelson has enough momentum going to get into the end zone. The ball fumbled as he crossed the plane. The officials Call it a touchdown, that's a correct call. The Johnnies lead here, 28-26. Brandon Keller on to attempt the extra point. The patience of Ryan Keating, looking off the defense, looking right at that free safety, then wheeling to throw it to Josh Nelson. That made that play. The all-important extra point for Keller is up, and it is good. Three-point game, 29-26 Johnnies. Back in a minute on the Johnny Football Network. Kelly bringing the ball up to the 25-yard line, the 30, trying to get out of bounds, and does. 
Two minutes left to go, 29-26, the Johnnies leading an eight-play, 40-yard drive using two minutes and 54 seconds. Ryan Keating throwing his fourth touchdown pass, going over 300 yards a couple of passes before that. He's 32 of 45 for 315 yards, four TDs, and the Johnnies with a three-point lead, and now the Johnny Nation here at Clement Stadium rising to their feet as A.J. Parnell, the backup quarterback for the Royals, sits in the shotgun, first and 10 from the 28. Two wide receivers right, one to the left. Parnell back to pass. Johnny's rushed for it, including Hood, and Parnell's going to be sacked. He's lost the ball. Johnny's held the ball, and 409 could be in the box. Parnell stripped of the football, and the Johnny's come up with a big turnover. And who has it? Ryan, why not the cover boy? That's right, Ryan, why not the cover boy? Jeremy Hood had the pressure right up. Uh, right up the middle as he came on a little stunt to the inside. He gets in Parnell's face, makes a hit. Parnell, the backup quarterback, sitting on the bench all game. His hands are not like Kirkhoff's, not like Keating's, nice and warm from being in the ball game. He lets it go to the turf. Why not? Falls on the ball. There's 155 here for 409. What a scene we're going to have, Mark. The Johnnies lead 29-26. Remember, Bethel only has one timeout left, only one chance to stop the clock. A.J. Parnell back and under a lot of pressure, losing the football. The first Bethel turnover of the game of the most costly. Keating takes a knee. The Johnnies just want to run this baby out with a bit of 51 to go and counting. Bethel will call the timeout. This is their final chance to stop the clock, Mark. We'll take a timeout as well. Back in a minute with the Johnnies up 29-26 and in control of win number 409 on the Johnny Football Network. Johnny's handed off on second down at 12 from the 24-yard line, and Josh Nelson, who's had a whale of a game, including what could be the game-winning touchdown reception, moves the ball down to the 21-yard line for a gain of three, setting up third down and nine. How about Jeremy Hood, though? Coming in, sweeping in, forcing well, we, the fumble. Exactly. It, we knew last week how sorely Jeremy Hood was missed because of the presence he brings, the experience, the pressure he can put on the quarterback and the way he plays the run. And this game, he's made a big difference. A minute 13 and counting. Eye formation. Nelson dot in the eye. Option. Keating rolling to his right. Going to pitch. Nelson on the carry. 20. Down to the 15. Down to the 14-yard line. Short of a first down. But it's not going to matter here. With a minute left to go. And the Johnnies are going to be able to close to run out the clock. It's going to be fourth down and short. And you don't want to give Bethel any time. So do you call a timeout, attempt the field goal, or what? Well, you don't call a timeout. Well, I think uh, that's what they're going to do because they're letting the play clock run down, Brian. Yeah. And they're, they're letting the game clock run down. The play clock will run down to one, and then Ryan Keating will take a timeout, give St. John's a chance to talk about it. There'll be about uh, 19 seconds left when the play is underway here. Full coverage of the game. Keep it right here. We've got a timeout. We'll take one as well. We've got a great post-game show planned for you in light of the MIAC Championship career win number 409. Back in 30 seconds, just a 30-second break on the Johnny Football Network. 25.7 seconds left to the Johnnies on fourth down and two from the 14. Sorry about my math there, folks. That's 25 right. seconds left. 29-26, St. John's on top. Keating with two wide receivers right, one left. That's Flinner. Now he sends Elliott in motion and hands him the ball on fourth down. Elliott hurdles would-be tacklers to the 10, to the 5. Elliott spinning his way to the 2. First down, Johnnies, and they will win John Gallardi's 409th career game. The march to history is over. History made here today in Collegeville as the Johnnies are going to beat the Bethel Royals 29 to 26. Johnnies, 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 Joh